Welcome everybody back to another exciting show of the About That Water podcast. Today, I have someone that everybody truly need to, to understand and actually listen to because she knows everything in and out about taxes. And I have the pleasure to bring on Angelina from 718. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? Doing wonderful. So if you can just kind of give us a little bit of background of your money history. Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. Um, my money history. Well, um, I ventured out to be an entrepreneur after losing my job in 2018. And I already had set the path for y- years prior to that. Um, I've always been interested in the stock market, um, entrepreneurship, although I didn't major in that <laughs> in college. It was one of those things I didn't major in. I majored in finance in college. So I would say that would be my first. And then going to classes, I would hear students talk about mutual funds and, you know, real estate. And um, I was one of those ones that had my ear to the ground a lot, a lot, especially when you're taking finance classes with your, um, you know, student colleagues. So it was one of those things in the household. I saw my parents, you know, pretty much you have a saver. And then you have a spender. <laughs> so, you know, that that pretty much was kind of start of my money journey. And then when my parents really didn't talk about um, investment vehicles, although they had vehicles like insurance and um, they did dabble in the stock market, but it was never a conversation they brought to the table. So as I went off to college, because I was one of the kids that didn't want to go to college. I was right. like, forget it. I just wanted to get out of high school and work. But things changed because my parents got divorced and money issues were real. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, Um, I learned about credit because I think shortly after my parents split, um, that's how we survived. We survived on credit cards. So when (laughs) um, when was your first credit card? Do you remember that? My first? Yeah. um, It had to be a store card. (laughs) Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, I be- yeah, I believe it was, I, I want to say Macy's, but I, I think it was Belk's. It was a Belk card. Mm-hmm. And um, because I got it denied from Visa or MasterCard, you know, and then I got a secured credit card because I wanted to build my credit. And that's how the money journey started. Um, but I decided to go to college. Um, I sat out a year because I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, So moving to Florida to go to uh, the community college, I wanted to go to junior college first because I wanted to see if college was really right for me. (laughs) Because I was like, no, my mother said, take one class until you finish. And so multiple years later, (laughs) I have two two master's degrees. So go figure. Yeah, go figure. So my money journey started basically... I would say high school up until college, because, you know, I'm, I'm listening to these conversations with these students about investments. And it, it really told me that they were having conversations in the home, you know, with their parents um, about that. So I reached out to uh, a mutual fund person and I started investing like $25 a month um, up until, you know, still doing that, you know, but I exhausted a lot of my savings to put in my business. So, so um, um, do you recall the demographics for those kids that were actually talking about those finances? Because usually in the black household, they don't talk about them as, as much. Like I didn't start doing that stuff until after I was out of college. The demographic, that's interesting because I went to Florida State University. Mm. So that was mainly a white school, you know, okay. Um, although my dad did teach at FAMU, uh, I went to the college, you, you know how I picked my college, Anthony, this is how I picked it. I, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to apply for both. Mm-hmm. Whoever comes back first, that's where I go <laughs> <laughs> in Florida state. Right. Yeah. Hence the colors of my company is, um, maroon and gold or, you know, a little bit of a red or goldish tone because I'm Florida state through and through, you know, I know there's probably some Florida Gator fans out there that like no but you know once you go to a university you 
you know, because I had parents that went to Johnson C. Smith. Mm-hmm. And um, it wasn't never a conversation of what HBCU are you going to go to? Um, when it came to my father, though, you know, he's like, are you going to college? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, because I, I, I'm from a military household. So um, but, you know, having that journey just to get exposed to all of that really helped me figure out what I wanted to do. And that was to be eventually a small business owner, and which I am that today. So, yeah. Thanks. So I did like um, to dive into it a little bit more um, because you did mention the colors of your logo. Yes. And so you have the Eagle and then the 718. So right. how do you uh, get your logo first off? Did the, your life experience happen first or did the logo just kind of popped in as you were just, just coming through? Well, the interesting story about my logo, the 718 is actually a date. Mm-hmm. And um, I established this uh, back in 2017. It was actually July 18th of 2017, where I established um, my first company, which was um, a real estate investment firm. I still have that LLC. It's mainly for buy and hold for rentals because I want that passive income. So I set that up. Um so, you know, eventually I could retire from corporate America. But like I was saying in, you know, our earlier conversation, I lost my job in March of 2018. Mm-hmm. So um, that 718 just stuck because it was like that was the year I finished that second grad degree. I was actually confirmed on July 1st of 2017 um, on the 18th of July. It was around 8 p.m. And these numbers mean something. So Mm. um, and when I looked at it, I was like, you know what? Because when you open up that student loan bill, it was kind of (laughs) like shocking. I was like, Lord, what am I going to do? Right. Right. So um, so I had a come to Jesus meeting and I woke up the next morning and 718 stuck. And so I started researching what the seven meant. Seven meant completion. One is unity because I want to unify everybody. Excuse me. That's my my headphone. Um, I want to unify everyone. And the number eight means come new beginning. So I jammed them all together and I'm like, you know what? This is going to be my brand. Nice. Um, and then I launched my tax company uh, officially in January of 2020, just before the pandemic. But I took a year to plan and kind of learn the business um, because I was in a partnership and I wanted to learn the business. And, you know, at that time, like I said, go back to March of 2018, I had lost my job, Mm -hmm. Um, but I got paid an additional three months from this employer. So I'm like, because I had a severance package and I'm like, what am I going to do? So I took time to kind of figure out during 2018 what exactly I wanted to do. And it's so funny. I started freelancing or contracting in June of 2018. And what they wanted to reach out to me for, because I saw that I, meaning the recruiters um, that I was working with, that I had um, a master's degree in accounting with a concentration of taxation. So I got into corporate tax preparation with this company. I work for almost 12 years prior, it's, it's amazing how God brings things full circle. So the things in my logo, I will get to the Eagle a second, but the Eagle um, is related to a book that I, I read during that year. And I'm like, you know what, I got to get a graphic artist to put together my vision. And I sat on it for a long, long time. <laughs> I mm. sat on it for a while, but I had the logo and I was satisfied with it. But um leaving that job, you know, planning, taking that year to plan, but me getting that um, contract job in June of 2018 to start learning about corporate taxes was just a divine connection. Um, Especially for a company I used to work almost 12 years ago. They called me back. They remembered me. Nice. And I was like one of those, and I think I was just floored because a lot of people I did not remember. <laughs> I was just playing it off. Oh, hey, girl. Right. <laughs> and, you, you know, I was playing it off. I was like, right. 
I, I, for the life of me, I'm like wrapping my brain because there's one guy, his name is Chris. We'll call him Chris. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's his real name or whatever, but he was like, what happened to you? You were my home girl and all this stuff. And I'm like, I who, is this, who, is this, <laughs> who is this person? But I, I give credit all to our Lord and Savior for that because where I left, they tried to break me so bad, like, you know, because they did awful thing. You know how the workplace is in corporate America, how they backstab and all that. Yeah, stuff. Give, give us an example, though. Give us, give us one example. Well, let's see. And not to say too much, because um, there was agreements that I did sign um, okay. prior to me leaving that company. But I would say um one example in particular, when I brought my product to my manager, okay, mm -hmm. and I'm entrusting her because she's entrusted me with this task, and unbeknownst to me, she's taking credit for my work and saying, mm -hmm. passing it off as hers, and I'm like, wait a minute, this is not right, you know, and then it slowly progressed because while I was working at that company, I was still complete, you know, finishing up my, um, um, grad degree because I was still employed with them. And I had brought her my final project to kind of review and look over because before I submitted it, because you have to do, um, what's that last big project as a graduate capstone. student, you have to, That's yes, a capstone. That, that, yep. the capstone. And I was so proud of this body of work. <laughs> <laughs> she took things from that to kind of implement it into where the job was, but she took credit for it. So it was like, okay, you know, although I got an A on the capstone, but slowly things like that. And then she felt threatened about me, I guess, being educated, more educated than her. Mm -hmm. And slowly things progress, hence me leaving March of 2018. Nice. So, you know, I took it as a learning opportunity because it, Corporate America is cutthroat. Some places, not all. Right. Some places are cutthroat. And I took it because I kept asking, I'm like, Lord, I want my own business. Well, he pushed me. <laughs> He's well, like, here you go. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, um, and then when that happens, it's like, oh, so be careful what you pray for and be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I did an episode uh, talking yeah. about that manifestation. Yeah. It's like, you got to be careful what you ask for because you might mm -hmm. get it in more or in the opposite direction. You might not get it the way you want it. So Right. And I yeah. didn't get it the way I had planned it out in my head, you know, mm -hmm. but it was a blessing because I was actually planning my exit. But, you know, the good Lord stepped in before me. Yeah. and organize it that's why i got additional um payment for an additional for three months and then you know um when we initially talked i kind of shared that story with you but these numbers put together and that was the third month of 2018 and the number three is very significant to me too because that's the trinity father son holy spirit so my whole thing is faith-based trusting what god is moving me toward and He's never failed me so far. So far, I'm so so good. You know, I'm I'm blessed, and I'm just waiting for those other blessings to run me down. Nice. You know, I wanted to run me down. I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> right. So, I'm ready. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It put you through so much, and then yeah. now it's like, all right, I got the muscle to handle that next yeah. phase. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where the ego comes from, or what's where they come well, from? Well, the, the ego actually comes from a book that I read. Um, it's a book by Bishop T.D. Jakes, mm -hmm. and it's called Soar. And that book on the cover of his book is a, is a picture of his face with an eagle to the left of him. And reading that book, and the name of the book is Soar with an uh, explanation point. And when I read that book, I was just like transformed. I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is a dream that God put in my heart. I got that logo made with that eagle and it just stuck. Like I said, I sat on that logo for a while mm -hmm. and I said, well, this is going to be the introduction to my brand because I have 718 Property Group, which is my real estate investment, which 
it's just buy and hold, you know, because I want that passive income. I don't flip properties. I want to get into that, but not at this time. But um, I use it for that. And then 718 tax and financial services. And then um, I have a travel company, which um, that's in the infancy stage, 718 travel. So I'm using 718 because that that the number of the journey from me having that completion date to that new beginning. Yeah. This is my new beginning. Entrepreneurship is my new beginning. So yeah. I'm going to have to um, link you up because I did interview a travel agent who's been featured on um, okay. Travel and okay. Leisure uh, okay. several times. His name is Steven Johnson and he runs the, uh, he's the owner for Odyssey Travel uh, Company. Oh. So I'll definitely got to link you to if, uh, you know, if you want to help get that going through and he's very yes. open, very approachable, and he's so happy to get out there again. So I'll definitely got to link you too. Okay. That'll be awesome. That'll be awesome. So yeah, I'm, I'm established in this 718 to the fullest. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm get, the, like, get the tattoo on the side. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll probably get a fake one. Cause I, I'm scared of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'll uh, probably get a fake one. But yeah, that's a great idea, you know, and I put it on just about everything and the sky is the limit. And so that eagle, the representation of the eagle means you're soaring. Think about it, because on the ground, you see the chickens pecking, you know, yeah. they can't fly. Mm. It may fly a little bit, but an eagle soars. So when the analogy says, are you a chicken or an eagle? Hey, man, I'm an eagle. There you go. Mm-hmm. I'm there you eagle. go. You might just get the eagle and eat some seven eighteen or something. I don't know. <laughs> get that on the tattoo. Yeah, that's a great idea. So you gave me another business idea. So oh no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. You know, but oh yeah, I'm gonna coin that um, to the fullest. You know, um, I'm gonna I'm in the process of trying to get that trademarked um, and everything because. It really means that that book, I'm telling you, that is something everyone should have on their reading list, even if it's on the audio book, because Bishop Jakes breaks it down in only way he can, because he's an awesome communicator. Mm -hmm. And um, I read that book a number of years ago. I might pick that book back up, you know, and just to go through some things. Well, I'll make sure I have a a link to it in the show notes. So for the the folks who haven't read it, they can at least listen to it on the Audible or um, Kindle. So I got you. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So when it comes to taxes, um, a lot of people really don't fully understand their taxes and they just kind of pawn it off to someone. Um, so what are the, some of the strategies as someone, most of us are like W2 workers. So can you just kind of give us like maybe some common issues that people have about taxes or common questions? Yes. Um, as a W2 employee, I think it's really important for you to look at your withholding um, by mid-year because there, I've seen interested Anthony, oh my goodness, where a lot of W-2 workers are owing the government and they don't Mm -hmm. know why. Um, A great tool is, uh, there's a link on the IRS website for you to do a withholding estimator. They changed the W-4 form because you know when you first get a job, they want you to fill out that W full form, um, so you know what um, deductions and exemptions amount. Never, ever, ever say you're exempt from paying taxes because that's a lot of the issues with a lot of my tax um, clients that run into, and they're surprised. And I'm like, well, let's look at your W four. How did you fill it out when you first got on, you know, your job? Because I'm working with a gentleman, or work with a gentleman this past tax season from Houston, Texas, because I'm a virtual company. Um, you, you can reach out to me anytime for tax advice or anything like that. But he was a police officer and he's like, every year I'm owing and I don't know why. So I, I the one question that I, I wanna ask everybody is that who is doing your taxes and who is explaining to you? What questions are you asking? Majority of the answer is I'm not asking any questions. Well, you need to go to a new tax professional. <laughs> you really do. Um, because with our platform, we research, review, educate, and then we file. Um, essentially, we have a five-step strategy for you. 
So for a W-2 worker, please, 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 there is a withholding calculator at the IRS website where you go through the, the steps completely. If you don't understand what they're asking, shout out me. You know, I'll definitely walk you through because I've had calls where I walk my clients through, even people that just call me randomly, I walk them through. And it's all about people helping people, you know. Um, well, let's um, let's go down and walk through right quick. If yeah, you let's done. do that. Let's All do right, that. Let's do it. Because um, I just went on and did a quick Google search for the tax withholding estimator. Yes. And I got the page up. So let me show the screen. Uh, sharing options. And another thing, you know, that a lot of taxpayers need to um, realize the difference between your standard deduction and your um, itemized deduction. So this is very simple right here, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you just click on that link that says use the tax withholding estimator. All right, I'm gonna see if and, I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, and then right below it, you see some plus signs. You can also expand that information to learn more. But yeah, it walks you through in six steps. The sixth step is really your, um, your results. So. Okay. Let's say John Q. Public is married filing jointly. Let's click All right. On that. So let me click married filing jointly. And yes. then the next, this is for the audio. So I'm going to just kind of repeat what's out there. Okay. Um, so for step one, it shows filing status and it can select single, filing jointly, filing separate, had a household and qualified, whatever. Um, yes. I remember on our call before you talked about had a household. Can you explain that one just a little bit more? Yes, I certainly can. I'm um, so glad we are covering this because filing statuses are very, very pertinent to um, us as a tax professional to ask you because head of household, I had a gentleman said that he's head of household. And I, I asked additional questions because if you do not fall in that category of head of household, you feel you file for single. He told me mm. that he was the head of his household. And I'm like, do you have any dependents? He says, no. I said, are you supporting anybody? Because I'm trying to figure out if he has a qualifying person more than 50% um, of the year, you know, like six or seven months, six to seven, six to 12 months of the year. Okay. The first three, like if someone come to stay with you for three months, more likely not, you, you're qualifying for head of household. But he said, no, my daughter lives with my mother. Mm -hmm. I said, well, did your mother claim your daughter on her taxes? He said, yes, well, she's head of household, not you. So Ooh. there's a little bit of a gray area that a lot of people are not understanding that single and head of household, there is specific distinctions, especially when it comes from the IRS. Because if you don't fall in that category of having a qualified person, now say for instance, the gentleman um, that I'm assisting in out of Texas said, well, my girlfriend is living with me, but she makes less than $4,300 a month. So I support her completely because she's pregnant and she really can't work full time. Well, you would qualify for head of household because she is your qualifying person. She, her, her income level is not more than um, $4,300 because there's specific guidelines that um, us as tax professionals have to understand in order to explain it to the taxpayer that he could claim her because mm -hmm. he's providing a, over 100% of her support. She's working part-time. She's pregnant with his child. Now, once the child is born, um, he would have two qualifying dependents. One, she is not so much a child, but the child, once it reaches a year old, he could claim that child on his, um, on, on his tax um, as a qualifying dependent and the lady, um, his girlfriend as a qualifying person, because there's differences. And as a qualifying person, that's $500. Now for the child, it's, um, I believe the deduction is um, $2,000 per child, $2,000 per child. So just because you say you're head of your household and you're living alone, no, you, your filing status is single. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You're filing single. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're you're single. Sorry. No, All right. there's there's no way around it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up for how to household. 
You're right. welcome. <laughs> uh, the next question under here, uh, after you click Mariah Fallon jointly and they say, may another taxpayer, uh, you're just going to say no. May another Correct. taxpayer claim you as a dependent on their tax return. Correct. Say no. And, and okay. married couples, you cannot claim one another because I was challenged <laughs> by a few people on that. I'm like, no, if you, you either have to do one or the other head of household or married filing jointly. Now the right. deduction rates for a married filing jointly person is way more than single married filing separately and head of household. So um, those standard deduction amounts. Um, and since we're here, I just want to ex briefly explain that married filing separately and single is the same amount, especially going into 2021. Um, it, and that standard deduction is $12,500. Um, there are circumstances where people do file married filing separately. However, there is um, forms in your tax. Um, if you have a really good tax professional to educate you, to let you know that, especially if that married filing jointly person had a child and they had child support issues. You can still file married filing jointly, but then there's a injured spouse form that you can file. So, but the uh, purposes of our demonstration here, I want to get back to. Okay. This text. <laughs> I don't want to get too much. Right. Give too much information. So. But it's good to understand like the different filing statuses. So yes. to help clear that up. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, um, so step two, which talks about the dependents. I mean, yeah, 205. Do you plan to claim dependents on your tax return? Uh, for this Let's hypothetical, say no. Let's no? Say no. okay. And for income, which is step number three, do you or will you or your spouse hold a job this year with paychecks from which the federal government, I mean, the federal income tax is regularly withheld? Yes, I would say yes. Okay. And then it drops down to options. How many jobs do you expect to hold this year? Most people just hold one, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how many jobs does your spouse expect to hold this year? We'll just say one. Correct. Uh, pension. Will you or your spouse receive an income from this uh, from a pension this year? We're just going to say no because they're not retired, right? Correct. Okay. And five of five. Check all that apply to you and your spouse. Any of these that's kind of typical. You want me to just do the I'll do the rundown for the listeners. Uh, receive Social Security benefits this year. Uh, your spouse will receive Social Security benefits this year. Uh, you receive the scholarship or grant that must be counted as income. You will collect unemployment compensation. Your spouse will collect unemployment compensation. Earn net income from self-employment. Earn net income from spouses self-employment. Receive uh hold taxes withheld or made estimated tax payments for income such as dividends interest distributions from IRA non not Roth IRAs 401k plan or trust have over taxable income such as annuities alimony and distributions from the IRA not Roth IRAs 401k or trust and then okay. it goes on to demographics. Okay, go ahead. Okay, for this particular example, since the pandemic, there were some people that did have unemployment. Mm -hmm. I would say you will collect unemployment compensation. You know, you're just now go going back to work and that will be for um, the main tax person. So okay. filing the taxes. So I would check that box. Just for Can we check for the spouse too? Um, what is this she, person you're doing jointly? Um, no, we don't need to check that one. We'll say that she was working. So Okay. And then the demographics say I will be 65 or older uh, on January 2022. My spouse will be 65 or older January 1, 2022. I am blind. My <laughs> spouse is blind. No, we can leave those blank. So we'll okay. be good. <laughs> All right. So I hit next. So now we're going on to the income withholdings. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one is the income withholding. And this is where you're talking about heavily, where a lot of people just say, no, we're not withholding anything. But that's on the actual, well, we're filling out the form here. And you said to make right. sure that they do yes. check this. Okay. Please say you do. 
Um, do you expect to hold this job the entire? Yes, you do. You expect okay. to hold that job. Um, and how frequently are you paid is probably the next question. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we're going to say every two weeks. Every two weeks is great. Okay. And then a say on what date your most recent pay. We can just okay. say what. Last what's Friday. Yeah. yeah. We can say. June, eight, June 18th. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'll do the most recent. Yep. Oh man, it's a lot of questions. <laughs> it is. It is. It really okay. is. That's why I'm, I stress take the time to do it because mm. that way you can have like a projection of the the tax. You know, if you do have a tax liability, right? And I'm, I'm glad that you're taking the time out to do this because a lot of people would never do this, and I, and I stress this a lot about you know if you really want to maximize your income, understand the W four form. Mm -hmm. uh, so total wages for this year. Uh, expected to receive. So you just want to say what he makes about what fifty thousand? Yeah, let's say fifty thousand. Okay. All right. Uh, enter any bonuses. We're going to say zero. Do we expect any bonuses? No. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Yeah, that's fine. That's <laughs> okay. fine. That's fine. Uh, my employer hold. Do we check this one? My employer will withhold yes. the appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even if you had, you know, didn't expect a bonus, but yeah, you're the employer is responsible for that, but there's ways around that, but we'll get into that on another show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get them through the basics. Yes. All right. Using your last uh, payment statement into the federal income taxes withheld. I don't know. Let's say year to date, let's say about. 2554. Okay. And then per pay period. And so if we're getting paid every two weeks, that's what 26 payroll. So yep. um that's where ed your math comes into play. Exactly. Right. Get my little calculator. Oh, it's on the wrong one. So I would say per pay period, he's probably taking out um, about $106.42. Okay. Well, biweekly, that would be, what, $212? So just put $212 there. Yeah, 212 Make it. Yeah. Make it All right. Do you or will you contribute to a tax deferred retirement plan such as 401k? Yes. All right. So and the contributions, we don't anticipate them not maxing it out, but like uh, at least kind of employer contribution. So if you look at like 5% match. Yeah, let's do that. 5% okay. match. So it's about like 250 yeah, paycheck? Yeah, I would say. Yep, 250 yeah. paycheck. Oh, anticipated per year. So 250 times 26. All right, $6,500. That ain't bad. That's thing. not bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, did, did you or will you contribute to an HSA, FSA? I mean, these are different um, strategies, but I don't think we want to go through that today, right? No. Let's okay, just say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your spouse job, man, do we have? All right. Because you did say filing jointly. Mm -hmm. so they have a okay. job. Uh, frequent spouse paid by two weeks. You just yeah. want to mimic what they were doing too? Yes, just do the same thing. Okay. Yeah, for the interest of time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I see this year. I didn't mean to spin this up on you like this. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> I love surprises. Right. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is educating the community. This right. is what we, we do. Um, and I do apologize for those who are, who are listening to the podcast, but um, I really want you to go through um, this tax withdrawal estimator because it will really open up your eyes to how everything is calculated. Um, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Other sources of income? We're just going to say no for that, right? No. Nah. Let's just keep it simple. Keep moving. All right. Mm -hmm. So we hit next. Now we're on to the adjustments. Uh, do you want to go to the next step without including adjustments? 
or would you like to see possible adjustments? Let's see some possible adjustments and just, just to see what the options are real quick. Okay. okay. If you have any student loan deductions, you know, put that in there. The alimony paid. Let's see. Let's just scandalous real quick. Oh, yeah. Um, so no, none of these are really applicable to our example. So we can just go Say next. next. All mm -hmm. right. But okay. just for de demonstration purposes for, you know, individuals who are kind of watching this, but, you know, the listeners, we, I really recommend go to the IRS website to do the tax withholding explanator. I'll make sure I'll put a link in the show notes for that too. Yeah. And the so next, oh, go ahead. We're going to take the standard deduction here. Okay. I'll take but the standard. If you, if, if you want to read the, the information for the your viewers. Yes. So, so far the standard deduction, I mean, the deductions from income, you qualify for a standard deduction of $25,100. Now that is pretty much standard across the board, right? Is there like a percentage or is it kind of maxed out for married couples? For married couples, that's pretty standard. However, I do want to explain, like, say for instance, that you owned like rental properties and you had mortgage interest statements for all the properties you own. And they totaled 26,100 instead of the standard deduction that the government gives you. In that instance, we always take the higher of the two amounts. Now, due to the, the Jobs Tax Act from our former president's law that he wrote into law around 2016 and everything coming into the fact 18, um, 19 and 20, um, this tax law really is for business owners. Um, but for our purposes for this example, this is regarding the W-2 employee. So just because, you know, this, our example here may, you know, straight didn't own any type of rental property or any side hustle businesses or anything like that, we're going to take the standard deduction. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Now, tax credits. Uh, tax credits are amounts you subtract directly from your tax obligation. Would you like to learn more about your tax credits that you're eligible for? Um, do you just want to see the tax credits? Just Yeah, let's look at them just to see okay. what you may qualify for because you, you might have a child. What we said that we didn't. Mm -hmm. um, any educational expenses, foreign tax credit. Typically, a lot of my tax um, clients don't have that. So educational, like you went back to school, you might get the lifetime learning credit. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a homeowner, um, retirement savings, so you get credit for that up to a certain income level, though. <laughs> that's the kicker with this. That's why I tell you this new tax bill that's, yeah. <laughs> that's been in effect because of our the former administration. It's just, it really kicked a lot of people in the, in the gut. But, and that's for the homeowner one? Um, homeowner, if you have million dollar properties, it's great for you. You know, mm. um, if you had some type of energy credit for your residence, like you did a complete overhaul and you have solar energy now on your house. Okay. Um, if you drove a energy efficient vehicle, um, alternative minimum tax is oh. something that, um, you know, I haven't really seen, but if you ever have questions, there are little question marks next to it and it explains a little bit more for you. So, okay. but it's a great exercise. Those. No, no. Yeah. Um, your viewers, you know, they can look at that at their leisure when they go through this um, estimator. Definitely. Um, and so we're just going to say next because we're not going to do anything yeah. on this one. Let's say okay. next. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. They actually get a refund. <laughs> yeah. So this is your result. Step six. So. Um, basically, your expected withholding for the entire two income household is that ninety nine thousand. Okay? okay, and then your anticipated tax obligation is seven thousand dollars. So it's saying that you're going to have an overpayment. Anytime you have an overpayment, that's when you get a refund. Anytime you have an underpayment, means you owe. So for this um, particular example, if you take this result and if you scroll down a little bit more, Anthony. Mm -hmm that um, it gives you kind of some directions on what is projected and you can either slide to adjust your results and say, well, I don't want to get that much back because the one misconception a lot of people 
um, have is that, oh, I'm getting a refund from the IRS at the end of the year. Why are you giving tax free money to the government to hold for you interest free? When you do owe the government, you are charged interest and penalties. So adjusting that withholding, it all depends on what, what, what are your goals? Okay. If you want to take more of your money throughout the 12 months, that's recommended. And then toward the end of the year, when you file your taxes, if you get a small refund, like right here, you adjusted the, the income to what? 46,000? 46,000. Yes. Okay. So if you want a desired refund amount of 1585, it's like you have to take more out of your check. So there's a way there's a um, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> See, and this is crazy on like how Yeah. How much money And it gives you instructions below that on how okay. to adjust your withholding. So if you keep going, but I really highly recommend because see, you're in they have a about you section and mm. income and withholding. Um, and then your adjustments. And then if you keep scrolling down further, mm -hmm. it will tell you unless you already clicked on it and I missed it. Which one? I didn't click on anything. I was just because um, okay. Okay. I mean, I can bring it back to the max on what they said originally. Yeah. Because I know it. Uh, yeah, there we go. OK. And then I, I know keep I scrolling. saw it. Yeah, keep scrolling. OK. Okay, so if you do nothing, right. this is what they're saying. This is what your, your credits are um, and total what you paid so far in to the system. But now your total tax liability after credits is at $7,303 there, okay? Yep. Now taxes this far this year because we're at the midpoint of the year. We're mm -hmm. about to get into July. So from this, my recommendation is to print this and then have your W-4 form um, like next to you. <laughs> so you'll be able to adjust accordingly because I think it would be more demonstration to, to kind of, I guess, um, do a comparison. Once you have that W-4 form sitting next to you, you will have an option to say, look, what do I want after taxes to come out of my check? Because right now, your results, you're getting a refund and you're, right. you got a your overpayment of about $92,000. Okay. Um, it said, if you do not change your withholding, you're likely to get a refund. So your anticipated um, tax obligation is at $7,000. Um, if I've confused anybody, um, please, you know, reach out to me. Right. Or <laughs> <laughs> Because you can you can use this calculator to adjust your your. Can you pull up the W four form um, from the uh, website? Normally they have the. Uh, I'm surprised because I remember last time I did this, they actually pulled it up. But I think they asked for what state you're in before okay. they uh, before they could pull up which form. But this, sure. they changed it a little bit. So. Yeah, because um, I believe it was 2020 when they actually changed the W four mm -hmm. form because. The f old form, you can manipulate. Say, well, I want to. That was so down. easy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, since, you know, new law, <laughs> the new <laughs> Jobs Tax Act, it's like it's nailing everybody and not, everybody's not doing anything. So for us to go through this exercise, because if you can blow that up a little bit. Yeah. Um, Is that good enough? Know, yeah, that's good. Step okay. one would be pretty standard. You know, yep. put your name, address. Same stuff. Um, and then you're going to click on married filing jointly there. And then step two, this is where they kind of made the difference. Now, multiple jobs in the household, you and yep. your, spice, your spouse are working. So you would do, you know, the instructions on this particular sheet. There is four pages to this sheet. So mm -hmm. fill out every single sheet. If it was a reading page, read it. Because step, step two, Page two of this form gives you instructions. But here, you in step two, you're going to do one of the following. So you have multiple jobs. So we're going to look at page three and enter the result um, on page, step four of, of C for roughly accurate withholding. Or okay. check that box. The one that's in step two? 
Yeah. Okay. You can check yeah, that good. box and then you're not claiming any dependence. However, you will, if you have children under the age of 17, you get $2,000 per child. If you, that other dependent is your qualifying person. So if you had someone living with you, that's the extra $500 you'll get. So total would be $2,500 if, you know, in this example of John Q public had children. So mm -hmm. now step four is other adjustments that you want to actually include. But see, step four, if you go to page two of this PDF, and we may have to edit this out, but. I know. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to do some editing. Okay, step four. I see it right here. The optional. Yeah, it's very optional, but, you know, read it and see if it's applicable to you. Um, and if it's not applicable to you, I would recommend not completing it. However, there are some instances where you have a job or you're self-employed that it may help you with your estimated taxes at the end of the year. Um, and doing your estimated taxes, like say for instance, in the prior year, 2020, that we just ended with, um, you owed $2,000 to the government. So right. basically your estimated taxes for um, 2021, is just taking, uh, divide that by four, um, because it's four quarters in a year. Um, so that'll be about what, $500? Yeah, sorry. So you would probably put that in there and say like other income, let's see, where's the estimated taxes? I think we need to put that online. That's, it should be line A, right? 4A? Yeah, 4A. So I would put $500 there. And there, if there's any extra withholding, because you're getting so much back right. from our example that um, oh, so you I need to say, add so much. Yeah, so I would say what two fifty per pay period. I want additional taken out of my check, so yeah, you can kind of be in line. And then once you do all of that, um, step five, you're going to sign it if you're if you're happy with it. And then just scroll down to page. Three. Four, three. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back to page because this is the worksheet for multiple jobs. Um, I see. If, if two jobs, you know, you're married, filing jointly, and if you have three jobs, et cetera. Um, and so it's giving you instructions on this form to divide your annual amount from line one that you put there. Like, say, for instance, you and your wife made, or John Q. Public made um, fifty thousand dollars a year a piece, so that's a hundred thousand dollars there. Mm -hmm. And so from that point, um, and we don't have anything in two A, or we don't have anything in two B. Two C would be just your result, um, which is zero. Which is zero, and then enter the number of pay periods, which is what twenty six. Twenty six. Yep. Like Biweekly. So you're going to divide that 26 into that 100,000 to give you um, the annual amount on line one, which is 100,000 divided by 26 should give us, I'm doing quick math, um, 3,846.15. Is that what you got? Yep. So I would round that up. So it'll be 338.46 in there. Okay. Okay. So, and from here on um, 4B about your deductions worksheet, since you're married filing, um, your estimate, your enter your estimate of your 2021 itemized deductions. Well, we don't really have any because we we're trying I'll to take keep the that standard. Simple. Yeah, right. keep the standard deductions. Right. So we're gonna enter online two twenty five one hundred because you're married filing jointly. Okay. All right. And so on line three, we're gonna put the larger of the two amounts from one and two, which is 25,100. Okay, if line two is greater than line one, you enter zero. Okay. Oh, duh. It's okay, it's all right. <laughs> And we didn't have any estimate of student loan interest or anything like that. So at lines three and four, just so zero on this one. Yeah. So 
And that's what we're going to put on 4B on your W-4 form is zero. Okay. So this is what strips, this is re really what trips everybody up. So if you do have these deductions and you may have them and you don't know it. So <laughs> it's, it's worth taking the time to see if I do have these deductions, student loan interest, mortgage interest and all this stuff. And if you don't have that um, live information, Use an estimate from the prior year right? to put that in there. Awesome. Cool. I'm sorry to no. dive that directly into uh, the, <laughs> the W-4 <laughs> forms for you. That's okay. That's okay. We might, we might have to add up a little bit of this out right here for the tax <laughs> uh -oh. estimator. Because mm -hmm. I was looking for, there is a, I thought I saw it. Um, they may have changed it a little bit because when you actually scroll down from your results, you would see what to do and what that means. But it's almost, you know, yeah, they, I think they changed it um, yeah. because they used to have it. And I know exactly what you're talking about because that's how I had to do my W4s before I went mm -hmm. to work. Cause I, I paid all too much last time. So I was just kind of like, yeah, I need to cut that back. <laughs> yeah. But I, I know what the philosophy is, is you thinking, I want to take more of my money over a course of 12 months. But when you adjust it, which is fine. I used to do the same thing. I used to owe all the time, but I knew what my strategy was because I wanted to kind of put more into my savings and I wanted to take more in throughout the year. Cause I had, you know, I had some plans for my, my money, <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to travel a little bit and stuff like that, but yeah. Um, but I shot myself in the foot, but I don't owe the government, um, anything, um, at this point, because I've, what I'm teaching my clients, I kind of apply it to my, my own personal life too. So nice. Well, I'm sorry to, to, you know, take up all your free time to talk about the W4s. Cause I really think That's that okay. is something as a lot of us as W2 workers kind of skip over when we go to work. And this is something that can be changed. I mean, how many times can we actually change this throughout the year? You can change it multiple times. Um, it, it all depends. Just make sure that your last change is before 1231. So I advise at the beginning of the year, look at it because you may have gotten a raise from your employer. Um, mid-year around June, May or June, look at it. And then again, look at it just before the year ends. So three times a year. I would, I probably would calendarize that on your calendar, put reminders, appointment reminders on your calendar just to, you know, stay up to it. Because a lot of people, because I was in a situation where you get bonus money, okay? And um, they take a lot out of your taxes for bonus. So I, I yeah, would they do. Yeah, yeah. They do. <laughs> yeah. I would adjust it just before the end of the year and then change it back real quick. So you can do that multiple times a year. So, okay. Because no it's to tell people to change their W4s right or contribute a little bit more to their um, traditional IRA or their 401k, right? As they know that they got the bonus before that actual bonus kick in and then switch it back. Is that? That's a that great okay? strategy. Okay. Great strategy. Yes. You're telling your viewers A1. Oh, thank Correct. you. <laughs> so you hear folks, I'm giving A1 knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So um, before we get to the questions that I have from some of the listeners, there's just a couple questions. Um, is there anything else that you want to uh, definitely want to share with the folks? Um, let's see. Well, I, I just want to kind of talk about, we can get into talking about my business and, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and some of, you know, the questions that you, you may have for me. So just All right. shoot from the hip. Okay. Um, yeah, let's shoot from the hip. I mean, yeah. we went over the filing statuses. If anybody have any questions re regarding that, um, you know, just post my information and I definitely can go over that. Um, I did before we, I guess, get into questions, kind of explain why the IRS is delaying some refunds. If we can touch on that real quick. Yes, please, please. Because um, I know for my clients, um, it's a slow drip. And I say, it, I say it like that because the IRS has a lot of delays, do a lot of, um, 
things that are going on regarding the recovery rebate credits, which is your STEMI checks, your mm-hmm. stimulus checks. Um, they're still trying to get that out. Um, and this is basically basically information I've got directly from the IRS because I have a taxpayer hotline that I can call. And when talking with a lot of the the representatives back and forth, they're saying that there could be up to six to 10 week delays on because typically those delays, um, your refund rather comes to you between seven to 21 days. Okay. Um, This year is unprecedented. Last year was, was a challenge, you know, because we were in the pandemic, they're still processing 2019 returns that were mailed in. Are you serious? Yes. On top of that, on top of that, um, the the good thing is they've processed about 29 million tax returns, but (laughs) be patient. The patience is really, really needed in this time because also they're calculating, um, credit back for unemployment for individuals that actually, you know, went out there and they, they lost their job. So they're giving credits back up to $10,200. So if you had received $20,200, you're going to get credit back for um, $10,200, which is going to be um, non-taxable income for that tax year. On top of that, Um, there was a glitch and the media is not really talking about it. And, um, this came straight from my IRS source is that when they opened up the, the, the tax season on February 12th, um, a lot of tax companies, which I'm not going to name these big box ones, but they weren't prepared for a lot of the changes that were coming down the pipeline due to the, um, the former administration signing the bill. The IRS did not have time to really get prepared for the 2021 tax season. So that's a backlog of that. And if you have kids and you're claiming those kids, they're going through each return, excuse me, each return manually just to make sure the calculation is correct. Because one, if you got the first stimulus check and then you got the second the first one, I believe everyone got $1,200. And then yes, yep. based on your, you know, your status, your filing status. And then the second one was $600. So they're going back to manually make sure and confirm that what you told your tax professional or what you put on that self-prepared tax software, that it is true. So that is slowing down delay. There's Further delay because upcoming child tax credit that's going to be released in July, um, July 15th. So patience, we just got to be patient because I, I still have clients that I did tax returns back in February are just now getting funded in June. Wow. Yeah. So wow. the backlog is okay. there and then there's short yeah. staff on top of that. So if anybody's looking for a job, we'll watch work for the IRS. (laughs) (laughs) They're hiring. Yeah, they are hiring. Yeah, they're hiring. Yeah. So those are some of the things I wanted to kind of touch on. Um, And if you feel that you need to get a tax advocate, they're going to tell you um, more of the same. Um, The one thing don't do, don't refile your return because it's there. Um, Because you may get that message that it's still processing. It's still processing. Nice. So, um, but getting back to your business, um, for those of the people that are listening and thinking like, you know, because you always hear about starting a tax business. Do you really need to get like a CPA or something like that to actually start a tax business? Or how does that work? No, um, I actually don't have a CPA. Um, I do have a master's in accounting and taxation. Um, I do have an MBA as well. To start your tax business, it's it's good if you have those credentials if you're a CPA, but there are programs that the IRS does have for you, and there are income tax schools that you can learn about the tax law. Um, fortunate for me, I already had that foundation, but I went ahead and took the tax school as well because I wanted to make sure that certain um, segments in that tax law, because the tax law changes all the time. Just because I went to school, I graduated, I still have to stay up to speed with 
the new laws that are coming down the pipeline. Um, from um, even from uh, the recovered rebate credit, when these bills are signed, um, I have to take an annual refresher course. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a, that's a good question to ask if you are a taxpayer and say, look, what are your credentials? You know, have you, t- have you, did you take the annual refresher course? Because I want to make sure that me as a taxpayer coming to you to get my taxes done professionally, that you have some type of education because sure, the software shows you so much, but the information sometimes is not all in the software. You know, there's certain questions that we do ask you, but we have to actually be investigators <laughs> per se, because you got to pull information out of some people, but to have that foundation, you can go to tax school. I believe it may cost you three to $400 to do that. Um, it's a, I believe 60 hour course. I would have to double check on that though for you, Anthony, but it's not that difficult. This is a need-based business that is needed in our communities because these big box tax companies come into our communities do the taxes and then they're gone. Yeah, they do do like little pop ups, don't they? <laughs> they seem like H and R Black just opened up. Like they weren't there last time. It was a uh, read us. They're, they're right. gone, and oh. they're not feeding. Like say, for instance, they're not doing community events for for the community. They it's a billion dollar industry. Hmm. It really is a billion dollar industry. But you do not need. It's a. It's great that you have it. You know, even if you're an um, enrolled agent, an EA, which that's something I may think about doing is being an EA. But because um, I can hire me a CPA, that's you know that's not a problem. Um, and that's a great profession. But you don't need it, not at all. Okay, so then that brings the question: How do you you know tax preparers actually get paid? Like, do they get paid based on a refund amount, or do they get paid by the customer, or how does that work? That's a myth if you get paid by the refund amount. And if someone okay. tells you that, run. Please run. Okay. <laughs> there, there, please. <laughs> I have I've inherited some clients that their tax preparer looked at their refund amount and said, oh, I'm going to charge you three times as much. That's not oh. fair. And okay. being a, a, a tax professional, circular 230, it says there, and that's an ethic, <laughs> that's an ethical no, no, you don't do that. Um, how we do it at 718 is that based on your filing status, and if you're a small business, that's how we assess. Because right now, I'll just use single as an example, because that is just the simplest of the simplest, that if you're single, have one W-2. Now, if you have multiple W-2s, we do probably may charge you a little bit extra, but if you have one W-2, your standard rate should be around three, 300 okay. or less or less, because sometimes I just do an assessment with the client. I do a client intake form and a lot of people, you know, it, it's challenge. You know, we want to educate them and try to increase their income, but, and how we do it, you can pay by your return because we mm. partner with a third party bank where we can set it up. You can pay through your return. You don't have to do any upfront payment um, of your return unless you owe the government because mm. um, that requires an upfront payment. And in order for you to figure out if you owe the government or not, because I've came across a lot of my clients with child support issues. And before the pandemic, that was like they, the IRS will snatch your, your payment. If you had a defaulted student loan, IRS will um, snatch your or offset your payment, um, your refund amount. And the way for you to figure out if you do have an, off, um, an offset or owe the IRS, you can call 1-800-304-3107. Can you say that one more time? One more time. 1-800-304. 3707. All right. So I made sure put that in there. Mm-hmm. And um, if you think you not, you're going to get run around your tax professional and say, you know, you owe and um, you're going to get your taxes done anyway. Um, we still can find out. 
if you will. Because nice. um, our client letter specifically states this in our client letter, engagement letter, that you're giving us permission to call on your behalf once you sign that agreement. So we will do do double check because um, I've, I've got burned a couple tax seasons ago where did taxes for people, IRS grabbed their, um, their refund and I, I didn't get paid. So. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those things that nobody really talk about, you know, I've been listening to so many financial podcasts and nobody ever mentioned that process. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's what separates 718 from others because we've kind of, I, I, like I said, uh, briefly, I was in a partnership and I learned these, these strategies and, um, my main goal was ownership because I wanted to own my complete ownership of my business. I didn't want someone to come in and say that they're going to take a piece of mine, um, because we all work too hard. It's, it's great for us to work together. But you know, you can't have a piece of that. It's ownership. My million dollar mentor said the ultimate goal for everybody in this world, it should be ownership because our country has, you know, it's been volatile. <laughs> it's yeah, been yeah. Volatile. <laughs> so, I mean, ownership is key and working together and collaborate with other people is excellent. But at the, at the end of the day, you go home to your family. I go home to mine. Mm hmm they don't come home to my, my family and no, it's ownership. Now, do you, uh, you have any children? No. Okay. Yeah, we don't either. Cause I just did episode me and my wife. We talked about not having any. That's great. So oh, well, I, 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 um, <laughs> I congratulate you on that. Yeah. Kids are expensive. Um, <laughs> not to say I, I'm, I'm not opposed to it, you right. know, um, the one thing I would say, oh, I wanted to say congratulations on your upcoming year on your podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> yeah, but um, with, with that, you know, ownership is key because that's tied to y your financial freedom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, does so McDonald's, does, does McDonald's um, partner with anybody? No. Chick-fil-A? unless you're a franchise yeah. franchisee you know yeah so. well they they say that they partner with the community like they try to get local resources and stuff like that local farms but you know that's probably like one or two percent of their whole <laughs> their whole franchise yeah. yeah yeah we can dive into that a little later <laughs> yeah. yeah that's another show <laughs> right so when it comes to uh taxes it's like um I mean, you gave us some tax strategies, at least for people to kind of maximize their income, at least for the W-2 uh, worker, as most of us are, uh, to kind of hide our money to some degree. Um, because one of the things I came across is like people with H uh, HSAs, FSAs, to kind of help hide some extra funding. Um, and for those who don't know what HSA, FSA are, it's like health something account health savings, savings. account yeah mm -hmm. and then the f sa is so what the federal savings flexible. account no flexible, flexible. okay account. Mm -hmm. thank you You're see welcome. that's why i got the <laughs> tax question on here yeah i had to do all this extra research before i figured it out <laughs> <laughs> um but having those accounts um help lower the agi which is the adjustable gross income and so having those extra perks like say if somebody is making too much money to the point where they already max out their IRA, they max out their Roth IRA, they have an annuity coming in and because they're military, they might have all this extra money. So what do they go from, from that level? Like, is that well, something that they can do? Well, I'll, I'll say this. Our goal at 718 is to maximize your deductions as much as possible to lower that tax liability um, because we don't like seeing individuals pay. Mm -hmm. But outside of the 401k, because I do have, I just have issues with the 401k. It's, a, it's the biggest fraud there is. Oh, do you tell, but, yeah, you got to tell that one. Why do you think it's a fraud? <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. How, how much return, you know, you don't, you can just make up a number. How much return do you think you should be able to get within a six month period on a 401k? Um, about at least 20%. I would like that. 
Okay. You're okay. That's not bad. Um, is that with a group of mutual funds or how, how much, I mean, what is the strategy with what's in there? What are stocks in that 401k or yeah. they are? They'll be, um, not complete stocks. So I'm thinking about like basic, uh, basic mutual funds, some high yielding mutual funds and a few ETFs in there. Okay. So did your financial advisor touch base with you often? That's no. managing that 401k? No. Mm -mm. I didn't think so. 20% is not bad. Um, because well, I said, going... this is guessing, guessing. I'm not giving an accurate number. <laughs> it's a lot lower. Well, I think, yeah, I think it's a lot lower, but um, I guess where I was going with this, having that strategy, look, you're limited on how much you can put in there each year, right? That's true. Yep. Okay. With the stock market, you're, that's unlimited income. If you have a self-directed brokerage account, like say for instance, which a, what's a good one? Alley Bank yep, is a Allie great Allie. one. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I have my issues with Robinhood. That's just you know some the, the <laughs> reputation is it's hard to get your money if you wanted it. Okay, yes. yep. so I would kind of create like a separate self-directed brokerage account where you have unlimited stocks. Think about things that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. like um, down to the car you drive, to the um, clothing you wear. Check out what, make a list. Check out those companies to see if they're publicly traded. One example in particular, um, do you have an Apple phone? Me personally, no. I don't. Okay. You have an Android? Yes. Okay. That company, whether it's Samsung or Motorola or whatever, see, double check to see if it's a public traded company. Those companies are. Yes. They are. Now, you can buy as many shares of that company as you want. We're talking on Zoom. Zoom is public traded. It's publicly traded. That stock, because <laughs> I'll just tell a real quick story. I told my mother about Zoom. Mm -hmm. She went out there, did her little research, bought the stock, and now it's doubled in, 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 in price, tripled. Wow. I slept on it. And I'm like, oh, my God. And she's in her <laughs> 70s. <laughs> she's she in really her 70s. <laughs> the gain that she got from that stock in less than a year was over 40%. Wow. You look at your 401k, you're making probably six to six. seven. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you have an unlimited income. Now, I do, I do want to say this. Hold that stock for a year. Mm -hmm. A year and a you, day. Yeah, a year and a day. Because if you say, whoa, you get excited. Oh, my God. Especially if you bought Amazon stock. Oh, my. Amazon stock is about $3,400 a share now. Mm -hmm. If you and I bought that stock when they first started, don't you think we would be multi-millionaires right now yep okay so patience equal profit so holding that stock in there now when you cash out your 401k you can't cash it out until what you're 59 and a half yes yep without and penalty right without penalty yep. now if you ran into a financial hardship right now um and you were like oh my god you know i need cash and this is the only vehicle that I currently have to get that cash. You know how much you're taxed on that? <laughs> Isn't it like the 23% or is it higher? Say, for instance, you had $14,000 and you needed all that $14,000. You're taxed on $14,000. Oh. You, yes. So plus a 10% penalty. Jeez. So okay. my thing with that, I think you can make unlimited money and and. And I do have a mentor who's teaching me this because I've gotten to the stock market almost three years ago. Mm -hmm. And when he opened my eyes to see IRAs, you know, especially when you leave a job, take that with you. Roll it Please. over into. Yeah. Roll it over into a personal IRA. account. Don't leave that money there. Take it out. You know, I need to play this back for my mom because I actually <laughs> talked to her about that. And she's actually on the phone right now. She was texting me like, hey, I'm on the phone with the now. What's IRA? You said it's like self-directed 
So, so yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, taking more ownership in our finances and this, mm-hmm. and see, these are the things they don't teach you in college. They don't teach you this in high school. Mm-hmm. But you would have, you never retire from making money, Anthony. Mm. Never. I so like that one. you never retire. From, and I got that from my million dollar mentor. You never retire from making money. And, and think about it. The masses, the masses are pretty much W2 workers, right? Yep. And you're following what the masses are doing, right? Mm-hmm. Are, is it the same result or a different result? You always get the same. Get the same. So you got to think outside the box. What are the wealthy people doing? Find mm-hmm. that wealthy pe- person that you know of. Because I, I know one thing in the next couple of years, I, Angelina is going to be like, I'm going to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> My company is going to run itself. And some of the stocks, I'm just going to give some hints that think about it. Social media. Mm-hmm. Who, who's behind Instagram? Facebook. Okay. That's a great stock to have. That's just a tip now. See, and I was in Facebook when it first went public when it was twenty dollars, and then and I did got you out. Buy it? Be- I bought it when it was twenty dollars, right? But then it dropped heavily down to like fourteen dollars. I was like, "See, who want to buy a social media platform? Do Nobody." You know what the, do you know what the stock price is as of? I didn't check today, but as of Tuesday, it was over three hundred dollars a share. Are you serious? <laughs> And if you would have held on to that, mm-hmm. patience equal profits. Yeah. These are in vehicles now from a tax, and because I kind of went, I digressed a little bit from a tax perspective. Having that special account with those tax, you're not taxed on it until you sell the share. And True. there's ways around the capital gains tax too, because you can tax harvest. You know, I, I will have another. Yeah, we got to talk about, about that. that one. Yeah. yeah you can tax harvest and that hit wouldn't be so hard, but would you rather get hit with 15% or 20 plus percent? If you take money out of your 401k. I mean, mind blown here right now. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm just, I'm it's just, crazy. I just want to, wow. <laughs> it's great. It's great for you. W2 workers. Go ahead and put that money aside because Once you leave that job, you're not going to be there forever. Once you leave that job, you'll have some cash to say, look, I'm going to invest some of this into the stock market. Mm -hmm. And your returns are going to be greater, faster. And mainly your strategy for a lot of people, if you want dividend stocks, that's great. Um, But growth stocks, you know, you're only in competition with you. So stay in your lane. Have a strategy to get, have five to 10 stocks that you want to invest in. Warren Buffett, well, how many does he has? What, may, maybe 10? Yeah, he keeps everything low. And that's one of the things I did talk about on one of the trade Thursdays. I was actually going to announce that, said I'm actually canceling my, my trade Thursday episodes because it's time consuming or whatever. Um, but mostly I want to focus on just kind of giving like the right content. Um, but when it comes to stocks, uh, listen to one lady. She's heavy into stocks. And one of the things is that she said, if you can't get a hundred shares of a stock, then you're, you're not doing anything. And I was like, Hmm, I didn't understand it at first, but now it's been doing it for quite at least a year. And now, uh, investing it's, it has proven that if you have over a hundred, it really makes a difference at that point. Yes, it does. It yeah. does. And, um, this virtual reality, uh, you know, a lot of people with the virtual reality goggles and stuff like that. People don't realize Facebook's behind that too. Yeah, it's a good stock to have. With the Oculus, yeah. Mm-hmm, with the Oculus, yeah. yeah. I can name some other ones, but yeah, no, we good, we good. Um, oh, there's one thing because I did find this out doing my taxes this year is that you have the opportunity to only withdraw max about three thousand. If you in losses, you can write those off in your taxes, or is it more than three thousand when you sell a stock? Like, say, you if you talk- just go ahead, explain it again. So, if you, um, so say, if you started off the year at like five thousand dollars, and no, just say like fifty thousand dollars in your stock portfolio, and then you wind up losing, say, ten thousand dollars. So, by the end of the year, uh, end of the calendar year, 
you only have about forty thousand dollars. When you write off your taxes for the losses, are you only able to write off the three hundred, I mean the three thousand, or are you able to write off all ten thousand at the same time? Well, really, you're going to have to be looking at how much you bought bought it for, mm-hmm. the um, acquisition date, and the date that you actually because they, that that means something. Because on a statement, I believe you would get a 1099B. Yep. Okay. From that standpoint, what the IR, even if it's not reported to IRS, please fill out that. <laughs> because <laughs> people, you know, especially with this virtual currency stuff, that's taxable income and they're cracking down. Please be advised of that. But if you're looking at the acquisition date and the sale date, the difference between that, whether it's a gain or a loss, you have to be honest with that. So right. if you lost three grand, that's the loss that you have to put on your taxes because every single tax document that you receive, the IRS receives it too. They're just waiting on you to match it up and be responsible in reporting it. There's no way around it. So then why don't they do our own taxes? Like- <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you this. Those people who don't do taxes, the yeah. IRS is... For years and years, IRS is doing their taxes, but they're not giving them any refundable credits. And then they send you a tax bill. Mm -hmm. Even though they already got the money that they need. And they're going to ask for more. Mm -hmm. It's a whole game out there. It is a game. (laughs) But see, the thing is, you got to find someone who knows the game, too. Tax professionals don't sleep on them. There's some really good ones out there. Um, I don't, I'm tooting my own horn. I, I think I'm pretty good because one, I have a corporate experience, you know, because I worked in corporate America. I can relate to people. Um, I know what questions to ask. I want to research. I want to review everything with you. You know, we will prepare your return and we educate you because we have an actual tax review, um, from start to finish. As the taxpayer, you do not have to understand everything, mm. but we want to give you a high level overview because this is, these are your finances on what you need to adjust. Like, say, for instance, the gentleman I was speaking of earlier, he kept owing the government. Then, And then he told me um, later on that he's now 1099 doing contract work as a police officer. Nice. Well, now all your expenses Every single one related to you doing that contract work, you know, from your goggles to your gun, to the gun cleaner, to the boots, uniforms, it's tax deductible. That helps lower your tax liability. And so being a W-2 worker, another strategy that you should have a side hustle, turn that side hustle into a legitimate business because this new tax law is really for small business owners really for them the 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 middle class is getting hit hard unless you ain't got no kids to claim mm. you're getting hit hard and that's what our former administration wanted they wanted to pass that off you know you know to the little people so and should that um i'm sorry go ahead, go ahead. No, no no go ahead oh i was wondering this um because you said that with the 1099 should people start putting their houses into their business name you can Okay. You know, even if you have a business, Anthony, like say, for instance, you started about that wallet like last year. I did. Yeah. Okay. Now you can even write a vehicle through your business. I'm working you can, on it. Yeah. <laughs> you can also say, for instance, your cell phone. Mm-hmm. You can go to the cell phone company, show them your EIN letter and says, like, I want a business cell phone. Can you put my cell phone? Um, in my business name, instead of trying to figure out 25%, I made personal calls, 75%, I made um, business calls, Mm -hmm. put it completely in your business name, and you can write 100% off. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So for those people who are thinking about a side hustle, make it a legitimate business, because if the IRS keeps seeing it, keeps seeing and you, you writing things off, and you don't have, you know, a proper paperwork and stuff like that, um, because just because you're a sole proprietor, you think you can't get an EIN number. Yes, you can. Mm. Because if you want a business bank account, don't don't commingle anything. Keep it separate. Don't come. 
especially as a sole proprietor, don't don't do that because um, you're going to tie yourself up. You really going to tie yourself up. But these are some things that people kind of need to think about. Well, I don't want a business. Well, you're going to pay more more in taxes. Right. If you have the opportunity in the country that we live in to do what we can do, I mean, the foreigners come here and they they do phenomenal. Rolling, yeah. They're rolling in dough. Rolling. You know, if you said, no, I want to make some candles, well, not, <laughs> make candles. Right. You know, I actually got somebody candles right here. Yeah. Uh, I met a, that's yeah. nice. Very nice. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I met a lady yesterday. She makes candied apples. I had a conversation with her. I was like, why are you not making this a legitimate business? Mm-hmm. Fear. That's what it is. Fear. Gotcha. And I, and I think that's what I, one of these things is that I like about the podcast arena is to kind of tell people, hey, it's okay. And we have that education. We try to clear up those gray areas that, that people have on starting a business or learning how to invest. And now with the taxes, it's like, it's not that simple. It's just a little bit of reading and a little bit of dedication to just sit down. I mean, if you can scroll through Instagram for hours, yes. we went through the whole W what the W4 calculator within like what, 10 minutes. Yeah. And that's with me reading slowly. (laughs) And then there's another calculator that a lot of people don't take advantage of. Sometimes it makes a difference and sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's the sales tax calculator um, at the at the web. I use I utilize it for my clients just to see if there could be an extra 50 or $60 that we can deduct. And it's out there on the IRS website. Wow. Yeah, I'm <laughs> actually looking use, at it now. <laughs> people don't use it. It's like, man, but. Um, I do, I do want to say this. I did have a married couple that I did their taxes this past year and amazing to me. They understand the, they're both full-time workers, W2 workers. They, um, adopted a child that year and adoption credit. The government gives you $14,400 per child. They had multiple businesses from real estate to credit to, um, she did a brief t-shirt business. So on her 1040, we did multiple schedule C's and she had her receipts. This woman and her husband got a significant amount of refunds and she just got funded and the IRS checked it. I, they, Hey, I was, I learned something from them. I'm like, you know nice. what, for, for anyone who's listening or watching this, if there's a class that you want to take to learn about something, take it because that's a credit you can get for a lifetime learning credit. Oh, I didn't know that. Hold up. What? Yes. It has to be a legitimate place that you're taking, you know, oh, okay, class right. though. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, like they have a business and everything. Not like they're going to come to about that wallet class one-on-one. <laughs> right. I'm charging $3,000 for. Yeah. Okay. Take it, get that credit so it can lower that tax liability. You know, and, and, and the one thing that I will say, yeah. And fact check me on that because, you know, I don't want to say something that's not true, but one thing I wanted to say about the FSA and the um, HSA due to the new tax law, again, it's like you get, it gets you coming and get you going. Even if you save, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the 401k first, you get credit for saving. Okay? Mm-hmm. Because it's on your W-2 and there's a certain box where um, it shows you how much you save that year. If you exceed a certain income level, Anthony and listeners, you're not getting a, a, a credit for saving at all. If you exceed, I believe it's $68,000 um, for a married couple. I, I can picture the form in my mind right now, but I wish I could if I. Oh, yeah. Tell me what it is. I can pull it up. Um form hold on hold on let me let me let me let me see if i can pull it up on my phone because i was going to pull it up on my computer here but hold on all right second. so while you're pulling that up i'm just kind of curious about this lifelong uh tax credit for classes is because 
like, you know, your company will, other companies will pay for these classes. Now, can you write that off because these companies pay for those tax, those classes? No, if they pay for the taxes, that's their write off. You won't be able to get that. Mm -mm. And the, another thing um, about a write off, say, for instance, if you were a taxpayer that was in a situation where, um, let me see what this form is, where you had a charge off from a creditor, mm -hmm. that creditor, and you may have gone covered this with your with your audience before, but that creditor has a tax write off. However, that's considered income for you, especially if they give you a 1099C for that charge off. That is an adverse effect that adds to your income, not takes away. So oh. the charge off is a tax benefit for the creditor, not you. So that explains why a lot of people don't want the Biden administration to kind of do one of those wash out with the uh, student loans, because right. then it's going to be a huge burden on the students who already can't pay the bill, then they got to get taxed on the amount that they've taken out. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, there, there's so much yeah. about the tax law that is very, very, very. Um, and, and, you know, I, I commend people who try to do their taxes themselves, but that's why I take that refresher course every year to, um, to kind of, you know, educate my clients and the community. Let me see what this is. Is it? Um, and I don't know if, you know, your viewers are in a situation where they had to taken a, um, a distribution, um, from their retirement account because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, the IRS did, um, an adjustment for taxpayers to actually, let's see, that's not it. Um, that up to $100,000 you could take out and spread it over the next three tax years. Um, like say for instance, I lost my job and I needed $85,000 to stay afloat. Um, I could take $85,000 from my 401k or my IRA account or any type of retirement vehicle and I won't get taxed on it. Um, I would have to pay the first portion in 2020, but then the next two tax seasons, it's spread out um, with equal payments. So you can spread it out over the next three years. Um, and That's I had crazy. A, yeah. So even business use of the home, business owners use that business use of the home deduction to lower that tax liability. Um, W-2 workers, I mean, all I can say, even if you work from home during 2020, the tax law was written that you don't take that benefit, although you're paying for your internet and um, your your cell phone and all that. The employer gets the benefit, not you. Right. Not you Plus your gas and yeah. driving back and forth to work. Yeah. Um, your lunch. Your lunch. That's 100 percent. Right. Do you have to be a Schedule C for 100 percent for that? Or can you be self um sole proprietor and still be able to get that uh that full credit if you are a sole proprietor or um self-employed or a schedule c type of business yes you can get in 2021 you get 100 percent of your meals and entertainment and entertainment All right so i'm gonna have to start talking to some people i need to do some business trips <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to look for this phone, Anthony. Um, I might have to get probably with you offline on that because I don't want to hold up. Okay. Um, I don't want to hold up because I was but trying to look at a, one of my clients' um, tax returns, but I know it's, I think it's form 8880. That's what it is. It just came to me. Form 8880. It's in your um, schedule 1040, form, form, form 1040 rather but it's form 8880. It's credit for um, retirement distributions or re retirement contributions rather. Yep, uh, qualified retirement savings contributions. Yeah. Yep, I just pulled it up. Yeah, there, there's an income limit for that. And um, they don't give you much at all wow. they, as a deduction. They, they don't give you much at all. 
for the deduction. So is there a way to hide your money if you're already that high of an income? Oh, He's like, <laughs> you gonna get me in trouble. Okay. <laughs> for those who are listening, she just sipped some tea. They're like, <laughs> but yeah, they, I, there, there are ways to hide money, but as a tax professional, okay. the they're just gonna hire you. Okay, yeah, they're gonna hire you for that one. All right, uh, we, we'll keep the event stuff for. I plead the fifth on that okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> But there are creative ways to do things. So okay. the one thing I would say, again, I stress, learn from the wealthy and just mimic what they do. Because if you can go on, and I encourage everyone to do this because they're out there. Um, Mitten Bromney has his tax return. I, I would have to probably send you the website. It's public, you know, it's public information. Yeah. And I was, I was scanning through his... Um, his uh, tax return and on that line one of your 1040 for mm-hmm. wages, it's blank. Okay. But this is kind of the answer to your question about hiding money um, in a sly way. He, re- he, he kind of, he actually invested in real estate. That's a way to hide money. Okay. Um, he has a lot of stock and investments right but what was a kicker for me and i don't know if i got this number right when i'm reiterating he got a refund over i believe 1.2 million dollars it's crazy yeah crazy so you know and there's one of our former president um out there i think it's 2015 he owed about maybe $66,000. And then former President Obama's um, return is out there too. So there's creative ways um, that people are doing things, but holding on to real estate and actually investing in other vehicles than an IRA or 401k, you know, you can hold that money. Like you can have that whole 300,000 in that stock account and if you sell 10 shares or something, you're only going to get hit for what you sell. Not so much the entire account value. So, right. um, yeah, but there are minimal strategies for a W-2 person other than having that side business, you know, because as a, as a sole proprietor, Yes, please apply for your EIN number. Keep those bank accounts separate because what if the lady with the candied apples, like I was explaining, all her revenue that she makes from that candied apples feeds back into that business bank account. Now you have uh, revenue so you can have money for your expenses to buy the apples, mm-hmm. the cellophane bags, you know, um, the candy, sticks. the okay. sticks, everything. So keeping that separate from, because she was all scatterbrained. I was like, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, you can do this right. Getting an EIN number is free, mm-hmm. but as a person, <laughs> be responsible with that EIN number. Don't just say, you know, you can say Anthony's candied apples as your business name. Be mm-hmm. serious about it because um, you can write those expenses off on your schedule C. So that helps that W-2 worker because she works a W-2 job. That helps lower her tax liability. So when she filed taxes, does she just file like one form or does she have to file twice to say one for the business and then one for the the person? No, um, for her now, that's a good question you brought up for her. Her income will be on her schedule C. She'll be considered a schedule C in her 1040. Now, if you are an LLC with an S corp um, distinction, you have to do your business taxes first before you do your individual taxes. And the deadlines are different. Um, on the actual uh, S Corp, your tax deadline is March of every year, March 15th. Now, um, you being an individual sole proprietor, your deadline is April 15th. And, you know, the last two tax years, they, they extended it. But typically, it's April 15th is your tax deadline. Partnerships, same thing, March. If you have a partnership, 
That partnership is a separate tax return, which is a form 1065. That 1065 has to be completed before you can do your individual tax because you, you have a schedule that you have to put into your personal tax return. Um, 1120 and 1120, yes, the same way. Um, those deadlines are, those form 1120 and 1120S, um, those are considered S corps as well. And you have to fill out your corporate taxes first. It's the US corporate tax return because there's a schedule K1 for each one of those. Um, um, those are so confusing. It is. It is. Yeah. Back, call me. Call okay. Me. <laughs> but I yeah. invested a lot of oil businesses and they always give me a schedule K. Mm -hmm. um, and and they so confused. I was like, what is a ZZ04? Like what? What is yeah. zero ZH? This is not yeah. on normal forms. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, call me. Because <laughs> it, it can it can get very confusing because I did have a client, her and her husband have a event type of business. Um where they put on weddings and receptions mm -hmm. and she swore up and down. Oh yeah. I got a corporate return and I, I file on my 1040 after I looked at it, because when you get that EIN letter from the IRS, um, it's called an SS4. Mm -hmm. It tells you in your letter, how to file your tax returns. Oh, yeah, I need to look at mine again. <laughs> yes. Because I asked for that and that's, part of our process when we research your, um, the client's account. Um, I asked for that like several times and she was like, I don't, I can't find it. I said, no, this is detrimental because I know when I started my real estate company a number of years ago, I ran into an issue where I missed the deadline and I was like, Oh shoot. What do I do? What do I do? Um, my accountant at the time, um, wrote me a letter and asked for or an abatement because you will get penalized and the penalty is pretty substantial okay. if you miss that deadline. Um, well, I thought it was substantial during that time because I was like, man, I owe. There you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, oh my God, I owe business and personal. So I was freaking out. But I was like, you know what? Calm down. Let's just breathe. And I actually had my accountant write me a letter to the IRS and we sent it off and my penalty was waived. But the thing is, that's a one time thing. So if there's anyone out there listening and your S Corp has been delayed and delayed for a number of years, that abatement only asks, you know, one time. However, you don't get abatement until you ask for it from the IRS. IRS is not going to automatically say, Anthony, you have $20,000 in refund money that we want you to come collect. No, you got to file your taxes in order to get that. So same thing with the abatement with corporations that if you missed that deadline and you did not file an extension, mm -hmm. it, 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 could, it could get really, really messy. But the thing is communication. You have to communicate with the IRS and you have to communicate with your tax professional. Okay. Yeah, well then we'll we'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely be in touch. Yeah. So but we kind of went left, you I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> we talked, but it, it's good information because I think a lot of people had these questions anyway. Um, and just looking at what one of the questions were, um, and you already talked about them because one of them was talking about the difference between uh, filing jointly versus the pros and cons of filing jointly or separately. Um, and is it worth it to itemize or always go with the standardized? But it, every person's situation is different. I'm sure that's probably what you're going to start off with. Anyway. Yeah, every person's situation is different. Um, but as the tax professional, as myself, I do look at both because so back to the standard deduction with the itemized deduction, mm -hmm. it just all depends because even your charitable giving is tax deductible. However, if it does not exceed your standard deduction, it's not even worth putting it on your taxes. It really isn't. Um, but I did have a, a client that gave over $40,000 last year. So her, mm -hmm. her and her husband 
their standard deduction is what 20 well in 2020 was twenty four thousand eight hundred dollars mm-hmm. but their standard deduction their itemized deduction exceeded her standard so we take the higher of the two amount so um the way they just jacked up this tax law i mean it really dinged a lot of people you know especially yeah. when the work working from home that i was stating earlier it dinged a lot of people because Oh, they're like, oh man, I could write this off on my taxes. Not according to the law. <laughs> if you were self-employed, yeah, you you got all the benefit. Nice. You know, 10, 1099, right. small business. Yeah, because you those telling you this tax law, people need to get a side hustle or something. I mean, they're they're I'm sorry. No, you get <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Because what the uh... And then on top of that, I'm sorry to keep running, but when it comes to that, uh, the PPP loan, does that even, because you have to pay that back, is that considered straight income at that point? Or is that something that's just completely wiped out as a grant? Well, are you a business that legitimately is, like if you're a rideshare, like Uber driver or whatever, yeah. um, let's use that as an example. because. Okay. That PPP loan, that PPP loan is going to trip up a lot of people. If you apply for that, Mm -hmm. listen to me carefully, and you did not have a business, you may be going to jail. Wow. Yeah, but um, not to scare, but if you are independent contractor, legitimately an independent contractor, you should be fine. Um, But you have to use at least sixty percent of that those funds. For your operating costs and payroll and stuff like that. Um, payroll to yourself, like say for instance, you were a rideshare driver, Uber, Lyft, um, and you were out of work during that time, and you applied for the first because they had the first um, phase and they had the second phase of the PPP. And if you cannot back that up with your tax return, and that Schedule C does not. Um, match up to what you reported you're in trouble hmm. like big time but a portion of that is is forgivable up to 60 percent of that is forgivable um but you do have to show proof if you can't show proof right <laughs> there there is a video on my instagram page i'm telling you it's humorous but it's serious if you apply for it and you know you didn't have a business Right. No, I didn't. He- I didn't help you with your application, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you help with that too? I do. I do. Okay. I do. Ha- I do help with that. Um, and there's some people out here that are charging because um, one of my clients, he's a trucker. He actually came to me. He was like asking me to help him with his PPP, and I did. I- at first, I didn't think he was going to get approved because they do. The, the program that I used, they, they were looking at his credit because it went directly mm. from the actual bank to the SBA. But I found a program for him um, that he was approved and they just basically looked at his his schedule, um, see uh, his gross, not his net, because the first go around with the PPV loans, a lot of people got denied because on that schedule C, you have a part for your gross income or gross receipts rather. And then any other income to total your total income for your business. Okay. Then your part two is your expenses. And that first phase of that PPP loan before they changed the rules was looking at that net profit. And some people were having losses. And so when they first looked at that, um, meaning the program, and you had a net loss, you got denied. So they changed the requirements and looked at your gross, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And that's how he got approved for, you know, his PPP loan, but it has to be legitimate because if it's not, I'm sorry for you. Cause didn't you hear about the guy with, I I think it was the EIDL loan, the economic- Oh, the idol, yeah, yep. Three million dollars he got. He he bought a Lamborghini. Went to jail, <laughs> Miami. Yep, that was the one. Yep, I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, and I'm so, like, 
so much money that they were just giving out. And it's like, yeah. and then you got to pay that back plus everything else. Yeah. Yeah. But the beauty of that with the EID loan, they've extended that for another, another 12 months. So, um, and the interest on that loan is like three and a half percent or 3.75%. Oh, that's low. So if you got what, 20 grand, your monthly payment is, is about $89 a month, something like that. Or oh, less. Man. Yeah. You can use that to buy a property, get a, put that yeah. as, as a down payment for property. Yeah. Do a cash yeah. refinance, pay that back, and then you're you're golden. L- listen, people, right. oh. that that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. So I mean, but this PPP, I'm just saying, if if you really didn't have and you didn't pay yourself that that those funds and it's not working out on paper, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> I really <laughs> am. I'm sorry. Yes. All right. I think we, we went through yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, but we went left. We went left. Yeah. But it's okay. This is yeah. fun. This is fun. Um, yeah, this is fun. So anything else? Uh, always. I got my last four <laughs> final four questions. People need to know. All right. Is uh, there anything else on your end before we get to the final four questions? So. Uh, the one thing I will say you, to your listeners and viewers is that as a W-2 worker, play super chess. And the, the, what I mean by that is use your, you know, whether you're happy with your, your job or not, if you love it, keep striving for it, but um, play super chess. And what I mean by that is learn what you can learn and gravitate to those resources that you, your employers are giving you to do personal development because who knows next year, this time, or even a month from now, you may decide to say, well, I want to start a business. I want to have that additional freedom because um, I know for me, working in corporate America was a time stealer for me. I didn't like it. Um, and I, and with my personality, when you're put in a box, <laughs> I'm going to scratch <laughs> until I get out, you know, um, it's just corporate America was not for me. And once you taste the side of being an entrepreneur, you don't want to go back because you have so much freedom and you can, you can definitely use the concept of being playing super chess. You're, you're not trying to dis, you know, be disrespectful to anyone, but utilize the resources that you do have currently in order for you to um, graduate to the next level. And if you need some ideas and need assistance in trying to navigate that, reach out to me. See, be- you're full of resources. <laughs> Go back to your, uh, your number seven, which is the full completeness. Yeah. And then see, yeah, I'm listening. I, got some you, stuff to I want to unify <laughs> everybody. I really do. That's what that one in the middle means. We right. want to unify. And so you know, by the time you get to eight and you're done with me, you got you, that new again. You, you got that new be- Look at Anthony. Just soar, so I just soaring right now. See, I'm with this, you. <laughs> this story. I want all of you to be eagles. I really do. Nice. And not to say you're not eagles already, but sometimes we need to be inspired, not so much motivated, because we can motivate ourselves. We can put on our favorite music or, 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 you know, turn on our funny movie that we like to listen to all the time. And have at it. You know, the sky is the limit. You see this eagle? Well, right. sky yeah, I see. is the limit. Let's go. The sky is the limit. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Right. <laughs> let's, let's level up. Come on. Let's level up. Yeah. Oh, man, I love it. Man, this, this is awesome. And I like how you you take the 718 and just, it just works out so well. Man. I'm sure a and, lot of people are going to be listening to it. They'd be like, I'm a numbers person now, like doing numeration. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. And real briefly, because I shared this with you before we get into your, your, your final four questions. The number three, like I told you before, when I lost my job, I had three people sitting in front of me. Mm-hmm. Happened at around three o'clock, three thirty. OK, it happened in the third month on the seventh day of 2018. Mm. Three represents father, son, Holy Spirit. God already told me it was going to be OK. 
you know, I just had to go through the motions. Although I already had my resignation letter written. I was going to get out of there that Friday. I was like, I'm done. But God stepped in on the seventh and says, completion is done on this day. Mm. So, and then when I opened up my, my uh, manila envelope, what they, they showed me, my uh, effective date of my, resi- my termination was March 8th, new beginnings. But I wanted to leave and got nothing. Right. But God stepped in and said, look, this is what I'm blessing you with to do this for an additional three. I got paid for an additional three months. Mm. God is in the mix. I'm telling you, it's numbers. Uh, don't sleep on it. Seriously. If, if a number drops in your spirit, research what it means, you mm. know, and, and and try. If it's a bad thing, just like, Lord, please give me another number or something. Another- <laughs> <laughs> roll the dice again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, roll, roll it again. Like, right. But no, be very conscientious on, you know, it's all about advancing the kingdom. It really is. There's so much hate in this world. Oh, it's my, oh my God, there's so much hate in this world. But we have to be the light. We mm-hmm. have to be the light. And it's just more than taxes. It really is. Yeah. For me, it's no fear. And it's more than taxes and credit. It really is. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. No, you got <laughs> That's good. You're taking everybody to church right before we go to church. <laughs> okay. Love it. Yeah. And I'm not asking you to pass the collection. Like, right. this, is, this is free. This is free. I mean, even if you call me up and say, well, Angelina, I need to talk to you. I'm not going to, I'm not nickel. And, I'm not that type of person that's going to nickel and dime you for every little thing because I'm about advancing the kingdom. That's it. But I do get paid for what I, you know, tax preparation and stuff, you know, credit repair and stuff like that. But yeah, but it's more than just taxes and credit. It really is. Yeah. Well, we got you. We got you. And plus, you know, since you're taking a break now a little bit, you know, you can breathe since it's not past tax season. <laughs> I'm always working. Uh, it, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's not even funny. I have a client now that I'm, you know, pulling my hair out, but I am so pleased to educate him, you know, because I want to get him on the right track. Gotcha. I really do. Um, and I'm not going to stop until he gets it. You know, I can't spoon feed it to you, but mm-hmm. if I give you an action plan, you know, I'm going to check on you every now and then just to see how you're doing. But yeah. um, I love it. I just love it. I love it. Mm-mm. I can't go back to corporate America. I may freelance a little bit but yeah. can't do it all right <laughs> i know we can talk a little longer because i was like man i wanted to get into the consultation thing that's kind of like my next phase as i enter the new season for the about that wallet so that's actually coming through soon okay. i'll keep you posted oh yes please yeah. i'm all so right. blessed with this connection because you, you're you're oh. awesome you're awesome thank you oh thank you thank you <laughs> all right final four questions What does wealth mean to you? Wow. What does wealth mean to me? Well, one thing for me personally is having a strong spiritual foundation um, that leads into financial freedom. Meaning if you're a good steward of your money, because I'm very, you know, I'm not religious per se because religion and spirituality, that's a whole different conversation. My relationship with Christ, he has not failed me yet, you know? So wealth actually, because God is the provider of all things. So with having him being the provider of all things, your wealth journey, your money journey, it will fall right into place because once order is restored, blessings are released. Mm. And the biggest Um, but I think which is a valuable asset is your time. It really is. Um, and we don't want to waste anyone's time. We want to help you along. If you don't want to come on the 718 bus or the about that wallet bus, you don't have to. You can listen, you can listen to us and you know, gain the knowledge, but find your footing, you know. But wealth means to me is having that strong um spiritual foundation because that leads to, to financial wealth. You know, that's my philosophy. Um, if someone tells me different and show me, 
you know, why? Maybe I'll come over there, but I, I will bet on God all day long. <laughs> there you go. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. Yeah. I'm right. keeping it real. I'm, <laughs> I'm very genuine. I mean, I love that question. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, I like the answer. Um, you know, some people have it short, uh, but, you know, you can tell that you really thought about your answer. Um, and you stand by it through and through. Yes. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Number two, what is your favorite financial book or non-financial book? I have a couple. Um, one of my uh, financial books that someone gave me is The Power of Zero. Um, I believe the author, who was the author? Uh, I think it was. I got you. David M. Wright is is the author of The Power of Zero. Yep, David McKnight. And, yeah, McKnight. That's there you go. Yeah. And basically, it just goes through um, how to get to the zero percent tax bracket. <laughs> ah, hey, I have to put tax in there. There you go. <laughs> because look, companies like Amazon. Um, FedEx, they don't pay any taxes. They mm -hmm. defer their taxes. That's how they do it. I wish individuals we could do that, defer our taxes, but we get penalized when we don't pay. So the other, because um, I have a couple um, financial books that come to mind. And I think I told you, I think I responded to your Instagram post on this one, Anthony. It's Leadership by the Good Book. It's by David L. Stewart. Um, if anyone takes the time and looks at the Forbes billion dollar um, billionaire list, David Stewart is number 213, I believe, on the list. Wow. And he actually built his technology company. Um, it's a great read. Someone gave me the book. Actually, uh, the Potter's House of Dallas uh, sent me out that book because I signed up for the Pastors and Leadership Conference. Um, again, see, that's another thing as a business owner or side hustle person. If you see some of these uh, conferences that are being advertised and you want to partake in that, take it because you can use that as a tax deduction. Because especially if you have a Schedule C, if you're a Schedule C sole proprietor or LLC person, that can go against your um, other expenses because you're actually learning principles and concepts. You know, I'm always in the tax mode. I'm sorry. You asked me about That's a book. Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me about a book, but um, yeah, that's a different conversation. But, but I received that book from that conference and David L. Stewart, black billionaire. Everybody talks about Oprah, uh, you know, Kanye and all, Jay-Z and all these being billionaires. But this gentleman is actually laying out that if you cannot, oh, I just thought about another book, Anthony, but if you cannot manage yourself and that leadership in your business, because we're servant leaders, um, we're here to serve. And that's how we advance the kingdom. And that book um, by David L. Stewart is just eye opening how he pretty much trusted God through his journey with his business and became a billionaire. You know, he and his wife exhausted their savings to grow wow. this technology company. He's based out of St. Louis, Missouri. So that's one. Um, the last, <laughs> the other financial book is by Stedman Graham. Um, it's regarding leadership as well. Um, it, it's called, um, you might have to help me with this one, um, but I do have it. I've, I haven't finished reading this book. I've had this book on my bookshelf for, for about a year. Well, you can make it happen? No, it has to do with um, leadership, self-leadership in business. Uh, okay. It's his latest book that he just released um, last year. Uh, uh, what is it, identity, identity Leadership? Yes, Identity okay. Leadership. That is a phenomenal, you know, once I finished that book, but um, I've, I read that one. Um, 
and reading that one currently. Now, as far as non-financial book, if anyone can guess, <laughs> the Bible is my my one of my non-financial books that I, I do read um, quite regularly. Um, my routine in the morning is to command my morning by, you know, even it's on the YouVersion Bible app on your phone, you know, start there. Um, but a, a chapter a day, you know, just being fed spiritually. Um, that's one, one of the fine non-financial books that I'm reading. The, I mean, some people will consider the Bible a financial book. I mean, depending on who you talk to. Well, yeah, because the story of uh, King Solomon, because that's mm -hmm. another one on my list by S Stephen K. Scott. It's um, the richest man that yeah, ever Babylon. lived. Oh, the richest man yeah. ever lived. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's so, the title of his book. Yeah. Um, Stephen, a Stephen K. Scott. Um, that's the book of Proverbs. It's basically this gentleman, Stephen K. Scott, he got fired 10 times before he was a multimillionaire, you know, um, he found his niche and um, awesome book. And if you even start reading a chapter a day in Proverbs, it's going to help you. It's going if you don't understand it, get the NIV version or the message version, the King's James version, you know, the thousand that you may get a little confused for me. <laughs> you like a thousand matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you may get a look, but yeah, find a version that you can actually understand and, read a chapter that it, it spend 15 to 20 minutes with God in the morning or meditate, listen to something inspirational, but that's a book. Another one I have on my list. Um, soar. I told you about earlier by mm -hmm. Bishop TD Jakes. Um, and his latest book dropped the mic by Bishop Jakes. I just got that book. So I'm going to, I'm reading several books, you know, simultaneously. So, um, cause I just want to readers are leaders, you know, that's mm -hmm. that quote that everyone says. Um, and it's that's what he, I think he did mention that on one of his things. I saw it on Instagram. I mean, we live on Instagram, <laughs> but he said that, uh, his phrase was in order to lead, you need to read. Mm -hmm. And then he went on and said something else, but I was like, yeah, yeah. that is awesome. I like that. Yeah. Bishop Jakes, I'm telling you, that's yeah. why 718 is because of him. Mm. in that book, you know, getting that knowledge, you know, um, you, you really don't, what I, who I really look up to is Jesus Christ ultimately, because he's put so many people on this planet to educate us and the information is there. We just need to grab it. That's all, you know, yeah. um, there is another one for the ladies out here that, uh, it's by Sophia A. Nelson. I read this book a number of years ago and it's so needed again. Now it's called the woman code. Men can read it too, but you know, cause men have their code. Yeah, we do. You know, right. you know, and I'm sure you and your wife, you know, you can debate this too, but uh, the woman code, Sophia uh, A. Nelson used to be, I believe the white house correspondent for the Obama administration a number of years ago, she's a journalist, just basically says, you know, with the with a lot of the things that we see on Instagram, we get some of funny, you know, because I'm not going to go about, you know, I'm not going to go over what, you know, Monique said about the bonnets, because I right. have my, my own personal opinion about that. Um, I do agree to disagree in certain situations, but you are a representation of you, mm -hmm. you know, and this woman code is pretty much, giving a little bit of synopsis of our personal lives, business lives, professional life, and how to bring another person up with you. You know, don't just be selfish. There's a, there's a reason to be selfish for a season, you know, um, because in order to help others, you got, you know, you got to help yourself first. Um, the analogy everyone, just about everybody uses, you're flying on an airplane. You put the oxygen mask first on yourself first before you can help someone else. So that's a pretty, really, 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 really good book um, that I think I need to pick back up because it's lost, especially with being a black business owner. Um, we kind of 
have to reach back and pull people forward, you know, only for those that want to be pulled. Don't waste your time on those people who, who don't want to be pulled. I just talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not. Don't waste your time. Yeah, you because you pull your hair out. Like how, and then that was a question that I had with Johan and I was talking to him about that one. Uh, Johan Owens with the OMG uh, Financial. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about like, how do you actually reach those folks that um, that almost seem like they want to turn up the nose every time you want to talk to them about something that could actually help them go beyond just where they at right now, just even just 1%. Um, and then how do you reach them? And, or do you focus on the people that you already have as your customers? Cause you know, my listener pool is maybe 24 consistent people, but I want to make sure I give them the best that I have. And, you know, if they like it, they'll share it. Um, if they don't, you know, it's all right, but I'm going to continue to get my best for the people that are here for the content. So, and that's good, you know, and that's a good philosophy to have, but I do think at the beginning of the year, mid year, just like with the W4 form mm -hmm. and the end of the year, you need to go through your cell phone and cut and it's not because it's not because you don't like them the season is over people in your in your life for a season reason or a lifetime invest go where you're celebrated not tolerated so you come up with all these lovely gems i like this hey i've, <laughs> I've, I've been around I've, I've been around <laughs> Not in that way, but I... I know I, what you've been. I know what you've been. <laughs> I've been. Yeah. I mean, I glean from older people, younger people, but I think the wisdom comes... Uh, I, it's just my personality because my grandparents were farmers, hard workers. So I've heard... I heard some other weird stuff, but I won't share them on this, <laughs> on this, on this Zoom. But um, the one thing I will say... For everybody, male, female, black, white, whoever's listening, stop telling your business to everybody because mm -hmm. some people can't handle your dream. Mm -hmm. can't. My grandmother used to say it this way. You may laugh and you may think it's gross, but don't blow all the snot out your nose. Meaning don't tell your business to everybody because everybody's not for you. Mm. Okay. Leave some up there later. Blow it right. out when you right. get home. <laughs> <laughs> write you it in your bathroom. yeah. Write it in your journal. Mm -hmm. If you're having thoughts and you want to plan, put your plan together. Get a journal. Get a journal. I have mine here on my desk. Nice. And it, it's I don't know if you can see it, but no, nah, it's uh, I guess yeah. your green screen is cutting it out. Yeah. Yeah, but it it's a journal and. Write in it if you can't write in it every day. I don't mm -hmm. know what happened now. I'm, I'm yeah, slide to the right. Let's go. There, oh, there, there you go. go. Right there. <laughs> yeah, if you can't write in it every day, make it a point. You know, if you're you know on that W two job, don't go to lunch with your your coworkers every day. Mm -mm. You have a plan. Write it down. God is just having a conversation like we're having right now. Prayer and talking to God is just like the conversation we're having now. Yeah. Write it down. He knows the des desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Write the vision and make it plain. That's scriptural. Right. I'll back a two four, I believe. I'll back a two four, I think it is. But yeah, right. That's how seven eighteen arrived because in soar, that's what that book by T D Jake says. Write the vision, make it plain. I haven't written in mine on because I've been a little busy with taxes, <laughs> but <laughs> I have a lot of things I got to get out of my mind. Yeah, I do. You know, and there's places and, you know, things I want to go. But anyway. Yeah, you'll get it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right. Number number three. <laughs> what had what did you learn from your worst job? <laughs> oh, wow. <sighs> what did I learn from my worst job? Um, I had a lot of jobs, to be honest with you. What, but none of them were really worse than that last experience, but is to trust God and learn the lesson. Okay. Because if I didn't learn the lesson, I would have probably wound up in the same environment. 
a different environment rather, um, until I learned the lesson. Um, we are spiritual beings for a reason. And when people say, well, something told me to do this or something told me to stay away from that, that's something that told you is the Holy Spirit. Mm. And um, whether you're a believer or non-believer, that's what it is. Um, that's what I believe it to be. And if I didn't trust God in that last situation from to, uh, March 2018, I don't think 718 or you and I would be talking right now. Because I'll probably be in another dead end job, unhappy, right. making probably gobs of money, you know, but money, money is good. You know, money answers all things, actually. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that, that's a, a, another scripture in the Bible. Money does answer all things. However, the love of money is what destroys us. You know, um, <clears throat> I like money. You know, and money does pay the bills and all, and it does answer all things. You could travel to wherever you want to go, but don't let that be the main focus. So that last job taught ta ta me to trust God because I didn't expect to get paid for an additional three months. I thought I was just going to be cut, you right. know, and be on my way, turn in my badge and be on my way. But but I learned the lesson, though. And the lesson for me was to trust God because during that process, Anthony, God told me exactly what to do because it was, it was a point where, and I think I shared this when we first initially talked, I didn't even want to get up in the morning and say, get ready to go to work. Yeah, I had to, it was a process. I would get up. <laughs> or, or, it was, it was, I would get up either four 30 or five o'clock. Mm -hmm you know, um, relieve myself, you know, the then yeah. I would open up my Bible and I would read the scripture. And I listened to this one sermon by a minister. Um, it was Dr. Charles Stanley, actually. And my mother passed this, this sermon along to me. And in this sermon, I'm not going to go all everything what he said, but they didn't want him at that church in Atlanta where he was at. And they made his life a living hell. I'm like, man, you must know my life right now, right, <laughs> you know, right, right. you know, and he said in there, if you leave, it's on you, meaning, you know, put in your resignation, whatever. But if you make them make you leave, it's on them. So that means God going to take care of you. You know, you right. don't know how, why, what's going on, but even three, three weeks prior to me leaving in March, I already had cleaned out my desk. I didn't know why I was doing it. Right. But that something that told me, clean out your desk, mm. was the Holy Spirit. I cleaned it out because I don't really keep a lot of personal items at work anyway, because I leave, I live that private life, you right. know. And if I tell you and let you in and I trust you and I, you know, I let you know. I do that very open in that way, but I have to be comfortable with you. Yeah. Um, so that number three again, <laughs> three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. And I'm sitting there, you know, before these three people, and I'm kind of smiling on the inside, but I was real ser serious. I was like, okay, you know, I'm listening to what they're saying, but I could, I could hear myself smile. And I'm like, I learned the lesson because it was like, if I would have left on Friday, this was a Wednesday, midweek, midweek. Yeah. I'll never forget. Midweek. The third day of the week. Yeah. The third day. The third day of the right. week. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm telling you. Right. So God was in the mix of all of this. Mm -hmm. Anthony, I kid you not. I get goosebumps when I talk about it. Um, but I did go through a period where I was angry, but, you know, that's for a different show. But I processed all of that. And I got through it and I trusted God. That was like the one thing I learned from that worst job experience. And I learned the lesson because I would have walked away zero dollars thinking the next day, OK, I got to make arrangements, get money out of my retirement account so I can stay afloat for another X amount of 
months, you know, and because I, I guess this is what I'm supposed to be doing now. And God, you know, but it didn't happen that way. Right. So, um, but if it would have happened, I would have, I, oh, I would have survived. I probably took a couple of days off and reached out to a recruiter and try to get back in. But that's the push that I needed. Mm. I really did. Because. Uh, having a job is wonderful because that's that security. Yeah. But like I said earlier, play super chess. That's going to be my next thing. I may just call this one playing super chess with taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but we may have to edit out that W4 situation. Though. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, I'm going to keep it in there. They're going to get it. Yeah. They're going to get yeah. the full thing. Yeah. Um, all right. So you, this is my favorite question. What is your favorite pastry? Wow. I'm really not a sweets person, but um, mm. uh, I would have to say a chocolate croissant. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, I actually, there's a warehouse club here in Jacksonville because I'm in Florida um, where... <laughs> It's similar to, you know, like a Sam's Club or something. And their their bakery, I wanted to try it because I, I do like croissants. You know, the, mm -hmm. the buttery ones. And yeah. um, I'm not completely vegan, but I, I don't eat too much meat, you know. Um, but I saw this and I was like, man, I got to try it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and you warm it a little bit. And I I'm just... not. Yeah, you warm it a little bit. Let the chocolate just. Oh. It's very savory, very mm. chocolate croissant, I would say, is my favorite for right now, because if I see the light on at Krispy Kreme, I'm stopping. <laughs> <laughs> in, my, in my city, I will not go that way anymore. I was like, nah, because I'm right. petite, but I got to right. watch, you know, just like everybody else, you know, that waistline. But I'm petite, but I'm not. I can eat anything I want, really. But mm. um, that chocolate croissant yeah <laughs> yeah i would say nice. that would take that's on, that's on my list for right now now next year might be something else but i got introduced to that because i looked at it it was very appealing they had a little box and everything oh, they, gave you a little, <laughs> they gave you the full presentation okay yeah, customer they, service yes like it was in a little box you know and yeah. it looked it's all about presentation because if it was yeah. on a garbage can leg i, I don't <laughs> Oh, or just on yeah. like a paper plate and like yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, but they had a little box. It was so cute. I was like, yay. Okay. And then that's how they get you because I bought a whole <laughs> so you didn't just get one. You got see, I'm up here thinking like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna just watch my figure and I'm gonna just get one. <laughs> but that that's that's why you have a deep freezer in your house. So I <laughs> I put those in the deep freezer. So that's a southern thing, I guess. I don't know, because um, I get that from my, my grandparents, um, you know, cause they, they were farmers and they, everything that they, they ate off the land. So when they're shucking peas and, you know, beans and stuff, they would shuck them and then put them in a the deep freeze. So yeah, I was going to have that, say that for another episode, which is talking about some of the lost art, yes. um, as we've been coming into this technology age where we have so many food deserts, but there isn't a need to have a food desert. If you know how to grow your own food in your backyard. Yes. You don't need that much land to grow everything no. you need to eat. No, so. no. And to your point to that, you can get paint buckets mm -hmm. and put dirt. Because I, I, in my neighborhood, it's a homeowner's association. You can't really dig in the ground. Um, so I, I kind of, you know, thinking outside the box. Right. I got these paint buckets. So growing bell peppers, um, tomatoes, uh, I didn't, I didn't try the corn this year. So you did a whole stalk of corn in the bucket. <laughs> you, you can, you can, okay, okay. you can, but you would have to have multiple buckets. But All right, I'm about um, to see it. Look at this bucket. Yeah. I'm like, this, like, I thought yeah. that roots grow pretty deep though. But. You know, those professional paint cans that the professional painters use, the yeah. big ones. Yeah. Yeah. Put some dirt in there. I did peppers. Yeah. My mom's like a, because she grew up on the farm. So it's like mm. you learn these things. Okra. I don't know a lot of people like okra. People are like, ooh. But okra is is really good for you. So um yeah. 
And um, one year we grew a pineapple. It took three years to grow that though. Pineapples, okay. that har harvesting for that is about three years. So, yeah. Yeah, you might have to show a picture uh, of your your garden one day on the on the gram. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll post a picture. Yeah, I'll take some pictures. I, mean, I know it's not taxes, but you know, no. cause it's interesting to think outside the box, like you said, well, outside the ground, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty and cool. Even pots, you know, flower pots. If you get a nice big size flower pot, but see, I can relate that to a financial thing anyway because. Oh. Patience equal profits. If you're patient with that garden and it's growing, come on now. Yep, I'm with you. Cause see, I I did this. <laughs> I'm growing a peach tree from a peach pit, and it's been a year and some change now. Um, actually, since as long as I've been doing a show, okay. and I just put it in the ground, so just making sure the guy that cuts the grass doesn't cut it down. It's it's tiny. It's like a foot long now. But, you know, and I was talking about, like, I had a research on how long peaches take to grow. And they usually take about four to six years to yield anything. So knowing that, I don't want to just go down like, well, it's not growing. I'm going to just pull it up because it's, it has it took this time to grow and getting back into that investment piece. It's like, yeah. you know, you sell too early. Well, you didn't even let it, let it do its thing. So That's it. That's it. I'm telling you, everything relates to everything because- that right there will teach you patience, you mm -hmm. know, with, with your peach tree. It, it definitely will. And if you want to break it down a little front, because I'm kind of analytical, analytical in this area, is that a lot of our childhood issues or, or pain that we have is related to our finances and how we. I see that. Yeah. How we actually relate to money. Mm -hmm. I'll use myself as an example. As a child, um, I always got picked on, you know, because I was smaller than the average <laughs> person. My retaliation to that was to always present myself nice. Um, all about the presentation. I would try to make you laugh because that would divert the attention. But inside I was broken <laughs> it was like man what is gonna tease me today you know <laughs> you know right. and I would die I was bullied I would dodge you know childhood issues related to your money then you were in a situation where oh I gotta go to the store I gotta buy the uh, uh you're suppressing these you gotta be whole yeah. you know that's one of my things that I, I definitely been working on over the course of the years, especially when learning the lesson from Leah in that last job. It's like, you know, I give it to, to the Holy Spirit. I give it to him. I give it to God. And he mended me because you don't want to be matched with someone, you know, especially if you want you decide to be married to broken people who have mm -hmm. similar issues. Y'all going to be emotionally broke, <laughs> you know? You know, yeah. and maybe financially broke because you're trying to use that money piece as a, to fill a void. Yeah. Who are you trying to prove it to? There's nobody to prove it to. Right. You know, mm -mm. if you want to drive around in that 89 Honda Accord, you can drive around in that 89 Honda Accord. Is it? Right. Is it? Or yeah. 2000 Celica? Because I have right. a 2000 Celica <laughs> in my garage right now. Right. <laughs> you know? Like well, it works. It, hey. hey, it has over 300,000 miles on it. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm you almost know? up to 200,000 on my car. Okay, see? <laughs> yeah, we so, I mean, yeah, we in there. So, it's it's like these things, these material things, and people need to really honestly look around your environment because you got this, are you trying to keep up with the Joneses? Or are you trying to fill a void? Yeah, because things so, don't make you happy. Mm -hmm. Things do not. Mm -mm. you can you can replace that but be emotionally healthy and recognize even me talking with you is therapy it really is because okay. it, it makes me realize that i've overcome a lot of things a yeah lot of things. <laughs> and we only talked about what three of your jobs that's it that's it right. if my pull out my resume and some <laughs> things aren't on my resume it's like wow but see again childhood issues me job hopping mm -hmm. 
But my millionaire mentor did bring to my attention was like, no, you are playing super chess, but you didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. You didn't even know it. But when we broke it down a little bit further and talked about it, I didn't know there was five types of anger and I qualified for one of them. And I was like, cause see when, if, if my boss or coworker, I, I won't say the wrong word, ticked me off. <laughs> right. <laughs> you guys could fill in the blank, <laughs> Yeah. but tick me off because uh, I'm going to keep it clean. I don't want to disrespect anybody. Um, I would internalize that. I wouldn't vocalize like, why did you do that? You know? No, I would bury it, you know, and I, and then, oh, nothing bothers Angelina. Nothing bothers Angie. I was bothered. I just didn't show it. Mm -hmm. So my solution to the problem was, okay, I'm going to learn everything I can learn. I'm going to bounce. Right. And that's, that's, yep. I didn't know. Okay. So then I guess I am angry a lot because <laughs> I bounce around jobs every two years for the past five years but during that time frame i was able to triple my income you played super chess right. you played super chess yeah so sometimes negative situations do motivate us to greater things and you you made more money yeah. but we got to really be transparent with ourselves we can mm -hmm. be transparent with others but we have to be transparent ourselves because forgiveness is a real thing but we have to forgive ourselves first because if, if forgiveness to the other person, they did you wrong. Yeah, forgive and move on. However, if you make a mistake and you constantly think about it, it's like, man, you can't get over it. You haven't forgiven yourself. <laughs> you right, know? right. You haven't. But forgiveness is not really for the other person. It's for you. So why not? If it's for forgiveness is for you, why not? Can't you forgive yourself? Right. I make a ton of mistakes. Oh, my God. Right. But the thing is, I learned the lesson. It's like I can't do this in my own right and thinking, you know, this is going to be because I'm going to be running up in a different situation, a different environment. Until I learned the lesson that I didn't learn from the previous, you know. And I think I that's. Like you said, like with the angry, with the anger, I think a lot of people get so clouded with the anger that they never take time to sit back and learn the lesson. Uh, right. So they constantly angry. Yeah. And you're blinded by the anger. You can't make a really good decision when you completely angry. Next time you're angry, try to make a decision. I guarantee you, you won't be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's not going to be a good decision. Right. You know, um, I'm just, I'm just trying to be authentic here um um this is what you get i'm telling you yeah, my right. clients be like <laughs> my clients be like boy I, th I thought i was in therapy right hey but, i mean the 718 ain't there just to for show you know no, you're getting full no. completeness yeah I, like I mean i don't want to um dance around thing but you do have to be careful especially when you're in business that you want that ideal client but mm -hmm. you have to have that inner intuition to say you know how can I help this person, you know, um, at the end of the day, because it's all about helping people. Yes. You want to be profitable. Mm -hmm. And as, as a tax professional, we do want to see you pro um, profitable. And that's another thing we need to kind of address with some individuals out here that are small business owners, tax professionals are looking for all the deduction for you. However, when I look at your taxes, it's like, I want to explain to you, I want you to be profitable because if we deduct too much, and you're self-employed, it's going to cause create, you know, problems when you say you want a new house. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, we want to minimize or maximize the deductions as much as we can. However, I do want to see you profitable because um, if we take everything <clears throat> and it's a strategy, yeah. it's not like, well, if it's owed you or do you, this is the expenses that you submitted. Yeah, okay. I can I can see that and this is what you want to do, but I'm going to explain to you why you getting this loss because the loss and if your strategy you want to buy a new house, you want to get a new car, for you to be financed with that lender at that mortgage company, 
they're going to look at that schedule. See, they're going to see your 1040 and they say, well, this is your adjusted gross income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, oh, you're a business owner too? Oh, mm. okay. Now, if you're W-2 and a business owner, that mix is pretty good, you know, okay. especially when the lender looks at your documents. Um, but if you're a straight business owner and um, I'm looking at your taxes, I'm kind of, you know, playing, you know, practicing here. If I'm looking at your tax and I'm a lender, I'm like, hmm, this is your only source of income, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you make any money the prior year, you know? And when I look at that prior year tax return and I still see a loss, the lender's going to scratch their head like, hold up. So yeah, there's, many, there's many perspectives you have to really look at this. But tax is very important. But I rather, because they're going to look at the net profit. They're not mm -hmm. going to look at your gross. You can make $100,000. Right. They're like, wow, you did very well. Yeah, but then, hmm. Keep the lights yeah. on. Yeah. You had $90,000 in expenses. Mm. So you really made only what, 10 grand? Hmm. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to question you. So in order to have, you know, um, a really good tax professional that explains that to you, it, it, you know, I recommend that to anyone. And I'm not trying to promote or anything like that, but. These are some some of the conversations you should have when you try to go to a tax professional and say, look, can you help me? Even your CPA could probably help you with that as well. But there's certain CPAs out here who won't explain your taxes to you. Cert you. Certain ones won't. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you should request it. You should demand it, actually. Um, Since you're paying for it. Yeah, because you're paying mm -hmm. for it. You, you want to have an understanding. You ask them. Can you give me a tax review? If they say no, well, uh, maybe next year you don't want to go to them. Facts, yeah. All right. Um, I think one last thing, I guess, while we got the taxes piece is uh, from a business owner perspective or even a just a W-2 worker, when they come to you with their books or their numbers, do you, would you rather for them to have it in like an Excel spreadsheet or have just... Because you don't do the bookkeeping too, do you? No, but I, I am getting into that though. Okay. Um, that's that's coming. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're going to speak it to existence. Okay. Yes, well, you got that, it. And, and uh, it'll, it'll be available for next tax season. Right. Gotcha. Yes. All right. Um, the best strategy to have is spreadsheets are nice, but I do recommend, you know, if it's not QuickBooks, because everybody uses QuickBooks, find a platform where you're tracking your expenses. Like um, there, there is a software program called Hurdler. Um, FreshBooks is another one. Um, me personally, I like to go for the underdog because, and I say it that way, the underdog is that these are not so much recognizable softwares and platforms. FreshBooks, I believe, have an app, and um, Hurdler also has an app. And I choose those two because they're of their customer service. Okay. With, Quick, with QuickBooks, it takes a while for them to respond if you have a question. Um, spreadsheets are nice. Um, there's a couple of templates that I do use for some clients because some of them are not technology advanced or anything like that. They, they're not computer savvy. But um, with softwares and stuff, but you kind of ease them in. But tracking your income, which is your gross receipts, and tracking your expenses, because that's actually your PL, which is your profit and loss, because you have your revenue, less your expenses, gives you your net income. And it's best if you can't track it monthly, do it a, on a quarterly basis, because um, it, it, it makes our lives as tax professional easier because I'm working with a client now. I'm doing a full year <laughs> extraction for him. And it's almost like he's hopping from tax professional to tax professional. Mm. And I'm like, well, this needs to stop. And I see why the, the former tax professional didn't want to do it. But, it's, but again, it's about helping people. Yeah. Um, 
don't leave them hanging like that. You know, that I that or, that rubs me the wrong way. I'm like, no, come on. He he wanted assistance, and you know, it's taken me a little bit longer to go through all his his information um, because it's scattered. <laughs> it's all mm -hmm. over the place. So having that in one place, like an Excel spreadsheet, is good, especially if you can't afford the software, you know, stuff like that. But um, those are some good bases. Um, Hurdler is affordable. Uh, I believe um, one of my barber clients, he uses that. And I was so proud of him because the first tax year when I did his taxes. Right. <laughs> hey. So I, I was just praising him. I was like, man, that's so because it gives you reports. You know, I can dig into the detail if I need to. Perfect. Nice. And you can download that to a CSV csv file you know into excel or whatever so and manipulate the data as much as you can but as you need it but he was on point he listened and right. that's the thing that made me so proud i was like man you listen <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh my god i just want to give you like discount after discount you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah so those are so, a couple of things but excel spreadsheets are cool you know especially if you understand what you're putting together um, right but separate your income, like on one tab, this is what I came, I made like from January to December. And then on your, and that's on your first tab. And then on your second tab, um, I would have all your expenses from advertising to car expenses, track your mileage too. Um, there is a standard deduction we can take if you don't know what your mileage was, you know, in that tax year, but track that because that's a deduction for you. Right. Um, then, you know, other expenses are like um, your cell phone, um, home, um, office expenses, um, everything that's on the Schedule C. Because if you pull up a Schedule C, you'll see the expenses in there from repairs and maintenance to your vehicle, especially if you're going to and fro. Um, if you got an oil change, if you need to get your carburetor fixed. And that's the vehicle you use to go do your business, you know, small business. Not so much going to work now. Uh -uh. There's a fine line. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I, I did see that you can, uh, you did mention the car insurance because they do. I think that was one of the options on there. Yes, you can do car insurance. That goes under um, insurance other than health. So, yeah, okay. you can do that. Um but just about anything. Um, but those business owners out there that are also W-2 workers, all your meals and entertainment cash in because it's 100% deductible until they take it away. All right. So then I'll make sure I'll, yeah, we'll be in touch. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, yes, yes. All righty. So where can everybody find you on the internet? Well, on Instagram, I'm at 718 tax services. Um, my website is www.718taxservices.com. And I'm actually kind of revamping my website. So if it looks a little funny, um, just be patient with me because um, I'm having someone kind of make some changes for me. So um, I pick out there every now and then. Then on Facebook, I'm not really on Facebook that much, but everything's linked with Instagram, Instagram and Facebook. Um, it's at 718 tax. And then from time to time, I do post on Twitter. Um, I've been rather productive. <laughs> so it's, I haven't really posted anything. Uh, it's at Angelina 718 tax. And um, my phone number, I don't know if you want me to give it out, but it's on oh, my it's, website. It, yeah, it's a, I mean, you can say it. It's 904-233-7808. All right. Well, everybody. Um, well, first off, I want to say thank you so much, Angelina, for everything that you provided, because this is uh, really in-depth information that a lot of people probably don't get from their own tax professionals uh, or even from anyone in a tax industry. Um, and I want to thank you again for your time. And I'll definitely make sure we get plenty of clips for the uh, for the Instagram for you. So. <laughs> thank you it's been an honor and a pleasure anthony and um best wishes to you and your wife and the one-year anniversary on your podcast and oh, um 
it's just been an honor um, because just to tell your listeners and your and um, viewers here, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I, I, I definitely have been on a couple, you know, webinars. However, I talk to clients daily and this is how we communicate, especially on a virtual platform. So I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. You know, um, okay. if you can't tell, I'm very, very introverted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't have noticed. Not at all. I am. I am. Okay. So this is a milestone for me. So thank you. You know, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, as an intro, I mean, it's just you and I really, um, <laughs> until we put it out there. <laughs> That's it. I, I know. I'm really, I really excel one-on-one. I, I've always been that way. But if you dump me in a f- front of a lot of people, especially if I don't know what I'm talking about. Right, right. No, I wouldn't set you up like that, though. I know, I know. Okay, okay. Um, even if you did, because I was on a webinar, it was a live webinar. Um, although I couldn't see the people, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> it, it was a little stress. But I actually did the webinar with... Um, um, one of my uh, brothers, you know, uh, he's a brother from another mother and he made me feel so comfortable because we bounce things off each other. So, yeah. So thank you. So anyone who's fearful, look at me. I did it. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anytime. All right, everybody. Again, my name is Anthony. And again, she is Angelina from 718taxservices.com. All right, everybody. Wish you all the best. Thank you again for listening to the show. Uh, Be safe. I'm out.